Testing. One, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Testing. Hello and welcome. Hi there, welcome to DL. DR. Hello there, Matt. Hi there, Phil. <laughs> that was a great spin, Matt. That was. It's very, uh, very entertaining. Yeah. You're over there by the bar. I'm just over here by the refurb bar. <laughs> yeah, it's been uh, spruced up a bit. Since. Refurbed. Refurbished, that sounds more. Would you like a biscuit from the built-in biscuit tin? I'll have a cookie, yeah, I'll have a cookie. That's what I call them, because I've spent a lot of time in the US. Bits. Yeah, random, please. I'll be a random biscuit. Okay, I'm, I'm going to look at you, and then just throw you on. Ready? All right, Steady. Yeah. Thank you. What have you got? One of these uh, jam dodgers. Ooh. I'll pick the one I actually want. <laughs> Lame. What is what's what's TLDR, the arm at? What the Internet Digest? What does that mean? Oh, what right question? Mm-hmm. TLDR, of course. It stands for uh, too long. Didn't read. <laughs> and it's an attempt by me and you and the network as a whole. Yeah, successful attempt so far. Successful thus far. Yes. Mm-hmm. This is the big one, oh, isn't it? So if that doesn't scream successful, what does? Times up by a million. That means we've done ten million. Ten episodes million episodes. So that's impressive. I don't think I've even been alive 10 million days. I know for a fact <laughs> I definitely haven't. How long is 10 million days? I would, I'll say 365 days a year. It's quite a long time. It's <laughs> fucking loads. While you uh, explain to me what TLDR is, because after this 10 million episodes, I'm still not sure. I'm going to Google how many... Days. Well, each week I, Matt, <laughs> sit down uh, with my, my co-host Philip here. Hello! And we discuss, you know, interesting, enlightening, downright wacky and crazy. Yeah. Articles, mm-hmm. videos, often pics. We found Im- images. Them yeah. yeah. Mm. Over the past week, we just condense all the great. Mm. Get into rid of a all the bar form. all the not great right into a bar form. And That's how I eat all my right meals. Yeah. And we've been doing this successfully for ten epies. Oh, no. twenty-seven thousand three hundred seventy-nine point one years. Yes. What's point one of a year? That's less than a month. Yeah, Flop. that's a lot less than a month. Point one of a year is thirty six days, isn't it? Is it more than a month then? <laughs> oh yeah, it's twelve. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I meant that. No, I thought you did. How yeah. have you been this week, Phil? Um, been pretty good. I've been on the old vitamin D supplements. How so many uh, IU's are you getting in those? Five thousand IU's per day. Thank you. Now I actually um, I was listening to a podcast recently. I don't mm. know if you've heard of it, uh, Dr. Mm. Rhonda mm. Patrick. Mm. 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 She um, mm-hmm. she's a big proponent of the use of vitamin D yeah. supplementation, <clears throat> mm-hmm. and she, as a doctor like myself, also an MD, um, only has four thousand. Four thousand I use. Yeah, I use. A bit embarrassing for her. And really. you've, what you've done is you've actually got twenty five percent more than that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I get this question a lot actually, and uh, my response usually is, "Hey, you know, who gives a fuck? She she could do her thing, I could do my thing, and if she thinks she's better than me because I've got an MD." Well, you're not, are you? Because 4,000, 5,000, which is the bigger number, you know? 5,000. 5,000, yeah, thank yeah. you. So, uh, international units. Is that what it stands for? Mm-hmm. I thought it was India units, so I was wrong. It's not India units. I did think it was engine units, though. Then you pointed out the engine. It's spelled with an E. An E. And, of course, that's the sign language for an E. A sort of <laughs> guy with cerebral palsy. What else can you sign? Sign some things. <laughs> what sentences um, can you do? A, T, T... Why? I did used to know how to spell my name, but I can't anymore. I can spell my name in sign language. Watch this. See? Fucking hell. I know, yeah. I can, I can do the rest of this podcast in sign language if you want. I do have an uncle who is fluent in sign language. Why? I think he used to work with some deaf kids or something. Just picked it up along the way. Stupid. He also used to keep ferrets. One and, of those uncles. And then he used to collect ham radios. Point on this doll. And then... Where, where did he... Uh... And then he became um, a big Horrible motorbike trip. fan, I think. A big motorbike fan? Yeah. The last time I saw him, I was walking back through town and I was just massively high. Oh, yeah. And he stopped me and told me that um, a family member had died. Ooh, and God. I was just massively high, just trying to be, oh, no, that's <laughs> t- oh, 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 who was it? Oh, Graham, oh. <laughs> Oh, I'll, you... I'll make sure to pass that. I know you sounded so patronising. Yeah. Did you know this person who no, died? I didn't know. So it's fine, doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't affect me. Matter, anyway. Speaking of being massively high, I've been trying to hide my sorrow and misery about the fact that we've run out of weed. I haven't got any at all. Yeah. 
You found some sort of crystals. Yeah, I had to scrounge together the the keef, I believe they yeah, call it. Yeah, that's what we call it in the in the community. The the com. Just brush that the community. right in. Yeah, I've been trying to act like I don't even give a care because if I reveal I'm, I'm really upset care. about it, I'll it'll sound it'll reflect badly on my CV. And, and I'm I've been submitting them. these as CVs. <laughs> Just you know, whenever jump. I apply for work, just say GLDR at eight. <laughs> yeah, my I'm most recent today, today CD. Yeah. Thank you. Do we have a quiz by the, by any chance? Because well, I've noticed that the past few episodes we've started with a quiz. By few I mean one. <laughs> we did do a quiz before a few episodes ago. Well, I was reading an article about the pointlessness of these quizzes and how they are designed just to keep you doing them. No. And giving you a pointless answer. And it linked me to this website as being a prime example of it. What is it? Uh, Allthetests.com. So what I might do from each episode here out is just do the very latest one that's okay. been uploaded. Great. So I've not I've not proofread this at all. I've vetted it. This is called Do You Like Her? In brackets, boys only. All right. And this was developed by uh, Lewis Clark. So thank you, Lewis. Lewis Clark. And apparently it was developed on the first of September, which can't be right. <laughs> Because it's not that yet. It's not that yet. Maybe it was last year. We do usually stick to the last week in the internet, ladies and gentlemen. But when a quiz is this good, you've got to get forward a bit. How good is this quiz? What Don't is know. It? Let's find out. Eleven questions. Do you like her? Do I? I can't even remember what you said. Who? Do you like her? He says, "Do you like her?" In practice, boys only. Who knows? We we'll have to find out. <laughs> have I got to think of a, a woman? Yeah, just picture anybody. Um, question one. Wait a minute. <laughs> Lisa Kudrow. Right, okay. Question one. Uh, quite cleverly, do you think you like her? No. A, like, I love her. Yeah. B, I'd, w- I'd rather watch grass grow. Yeah. Three, not really. <laughs> D, she is okay. Or the final option is I like her. Um, she's okay. She's okay. She's all right. Next question. Like her own friends. Yeah. She's, she's good, in that. She played Phoebe. And Ursula. She did play Ursula as well, yeah. Yep. Who she played originally on, I think, Mad About You. Do you feel nervous around her? Mm. I think she is more nervous than me. My legs are like squishy jello, which is jelly. Oh, right, okay, thank you. Nervous? Not a goddamn chance. A hint of nervousness. Same as normal person. I'm going to say same as normal person. Same as normal person. Because usually I'm quite relaxed when I'm watching Friends. And that's... Uh, May, I mean, we mainly communicate through it, and it's not really a communication thing, I'm just watching. She just does friends. a few jokes. She acts, really. And this was sort of sit about. more than ten years ago as well. Friends ended a decade ago. Yeah, it's 20th anniversary. Is it? Oh yeah, it is, isn't it? 1994, yeah. So. Does your face turn red? And hot. She is that bl- option A, and hot? Yeah. Right. She blushes more than moi. Maybe, that was me in French. Yeah. Right. Maybe pink. But definitely not red. Okay. No. I think... Hmm, next question, please. Ha. I'm going to pick, I think, hmm, next question, please. Ha. And I'll tell you why. Because I'm not sure if I blush or not when I'm around her. Because I'm, I don't... Don't carry myself. around a mirror. I don't carry around a mirror to see myself when I'm with people. So I have no way of knowing. How often do you talk? Ooh. What are the options? A lot. Not a word. Mm-hmm. Once or twice a day. Every goddamn second counts. She is too shy and mean to talk to me. I'm going to say every goddamn second counts because that is the most applicable one. Me and Lisa, though, could row, not had a conversation yet. Not yet, but I mean, it's only not, a matter of I've not really shared a word yet. I've never tried to get in touch with her. And as far as I know, she's never tried to get in touch with me. Maybe she has. Maybe. For years, your mum's just been intercepting the mail. She's like, yeah, oh, that'll, be, that'll be my mum. Fucking Kudrow again. Yeah. Trying to rip away my fill from me. Yeah. That pisses me off. Just setting it on fire over like yeah. fireplaces. Over fireplaces. Yeah. There's a fire going on. She has a little bowl, so she sees it burn and it goes to ashes. All oh, right. And you focus on that for a minute. Yeah. Right. And then pan away. Pan away. With your face. With your neck. yeah. Yeah. With yeah neck. Neck and face and head. If prom were coming up, mm-hmm. who would you ask in brackets from school? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the hot girl in my science class. Wowie. Right. Still thinking, but not the girl who I'm taking this quiz about, okay? Does it have to be from school? I would not go to prom. The girl I'm taking this quiz about, obviously. 
I've added a little bit more emotion to it. <laughs> yeah, I could tell you. I appreciate it. It's helping me to understand it's the options better. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick I Would Not Go To Prom because... Too old. 21 years old. Yeah. Don't you have to be... Um, like 16, like 15, 16, 16. 16. It depends which country you're in. Our we prom, have prom at 16, don't we? Our prom was the night... Well, my prom was the night Michael and Jackson died. died. Sad. Not uh, America sad. have proms constantly, though. Like yeah, they're kindergarten, graduation, yeah. first grade. Yeah. I don't know what's... When you change school and when you go... Is there a middle school? between I don't know fuck yeah. it but there's graduations mm. at every fucking state mm. oversaturation of the product oversaturation of the graduation yes man you know god damn it that pisses me off I, I didn't it. go to my prom uh, no I didn't go to mine either didn't you no I was ill I wasn't allowed no oh. because I was late every single day in year 11 so you weren't allowed to go if you, if you continue being late for the rest of this week you won't be allowed to go to prom and I just had lies in every shit. day <laughs> yeah <laughs> Just never went nine. in after that. Yeah. It's like, fuck you. Got nothing to work for. Yeah. Question six. Let's say she's had a doctor's appointment, probably for thrush. <laughs> I had to leave early. What would you think? Oh, dang it. She was going to be my lab partner today. Why is this all about science class? Oh, well. <coughs> Hurry. <coughs> Did that say star cuff star? Yeah. But you've improvised the I've actual improvised. cuff. I've done it myself. That was really good. Oh, no. What will the doctor say? She's left. Mm. She's gone. Who who left again? What? How eight, many options are there? Like five each. Five. Um, I wouldn't really pick any. I wouldn't really care. Well, can't click. Right, number go. three then. Number three. Ooh. What was number three? What will the doctor say? Oh no, I don't care about what the doctor would say. Number two. Do you stare at her? Stare? She's a goddess of beauty. Of course I'm going to stare. <laughs> yeah. Keep your eyes on your own paper. Right. Roughly every half hour. I pay more attention to my math than her. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> what did the... Hang on. Because you just did a brilliant little mime of like a timid... Yeah. Shoulders up, total head. What did the actual option say? Just no. Just no exclamation mark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing I'm about sure. with the role. I'm just improving. Yeah, but it might mean like no. <laughs> no, but if it was just no, it'd then be full stop. Full stop. Yeah. No is like no, no, no. Of course. Oh. 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 Yeah. Um, I uh, I would say every half hour because every, every half she hour. if you watch Friends nonstop on Comedy Central. She's she's in every fifth scene, which occurs every half hour. Hello. Uh, so, thank you. Cheers. Cheers. To, to math well done. In fact, I would say, no, I'll keep my eyes on my math. Because I just, just did some great math there. If you talk, yeah. what do you talk about? Don't talk. School don't. stroke homework. Her life, mainly. <laughs> <laughs> about the ugly dress her enemy is wearing. My personal feelings in life I've told you already we don't talk yeah I've told you already we don't talk god this quiz is getting a bit again though Lisa Kudrow she must be about 50 and she lives on a different continent to me that's fine I've ne- yeah but I've never met her never had an opportunity to talk with her so just tweet her oh yeah I could just tweet yeah. her I'll send her a tweet via TFC now while you read out the next question do you think she likes you yeah <laughs> she does pick yes Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Lisa Kudrow. Where are you? Here you go. At Lisa Kudrow. She's kept it simple. Stupid. <laughs> K-I-S-S. That means she wants to kiss me. <laughs> In fact, I'm going to... I know what your Twitter handle means. <laughs> it means you spelled with a U. Want to spelled with a two. Kiss me. Wink face. You can. <laughs> Exclamation mark. Colon P. XOXO. Hashtag. Mona Lisa as in se- a sexual moan yeah moan Lisa I've swapped the, the A and the N moan Lisa hashtag sexually <laughs> there we go question number 10 would you stalk her mm, no <laughs> not if I were paid to stalking it it really isn't but yes 
Girls need their own secrets, okay? Stalking isn't nice, of course not. Mm. Not if I were crazy. What, so the last option is what? Not if I were crazy. Isn't that the same? Isn't that reiterating the first option? Not if I were paid to. Right. Um, I would say no, not if I were crazy. Not, not if, if I, I was crazy. crazy. Because I don't even know a Twitter handle. I mean, stalking is out of the question. I just don't have the time either to stalk her. She's just Lisa Kudrow to me. She's just Phoebe from Friends. I don't really think about her. And Ursula from Friends. And Ursula from Friends, yeah. And what's her face from her own failed, presumably, web series? Um, web development. No. I don't know. Do you, don't, you don't know the name of it straight away, so... Yeah, <laughs> it's meant to be quite good. Well, is it? Did you like this quiz question mark in brackets? It won't change your answer. <laughs> Skip this. Give me the score. No, depends. Yes. No. I did, but I want to get the person me. who made it. Oh, test results. You ready? Yeah, go on. Do you like a question mark in brackets, boys only, exclamation mark, close bracket? <laughs> you might. Oh, what? By no. a long shot, just possibly. If you realise that she isn't the one, I mean, that's fine. <laughs> because there wasn't much matching done. Comment to tell me how it turned out. I might comment badly. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa and I are not. Yet together, yes, I mean Lisa Kudrow of Friends Ursula slash Phoebe fame. Thanks for nothing. She's uh, she's tweeted 1,666 times. Spooky! Devil! Ghostbuster! On the sea, please! Who are we gonna go? Aren't they making a Ghostbusters like 12 mm. or 3? Or mm. How many have they done? I think they've done 2. I'm pretty sure they're doing another one. Yeah, I heard that, but I've, I don't think I've watched the first two. I might have watched one of them when I was a really young kid. You've not watched them? I don't think so. You've not watched Ghostbusters? Oh, they're good. Oh, no, yeah, I have, yeah. Because I feel embarrassed, so yeah, I have, actually. I just remembered. <laughs> yeah. They're great. I love them. Oh, I'm a big fan. I'm a nerd. I'm a huge nerd, though. Yeah. So I like a lot of those sorts of things. I'm so nerdy. So it's no surprise that I like Ghostbusters. But no, I've not watched them. <laughs> They are quite good. Not if we get the time, give them a watch. Don't tell me what to do. Yeah, Ghostbusters 3 on its way uh, next year. Well, fucking terrifying. You know, that's fair enough. Is Bill Murray in it? Yeah. That'd be quite good though. It might be, but Bill Murray looks incredibly old. Yeah, but they, I imagine they'll be the old Ghostbusters teaching the new ones, played by young up and comers like, you know, Sandler. PB&J. PB&J, yeah, from the Bedside Chronicles podcast, available on iTunes and Stitcher and YouTube. Um, Cage. Yeah, He'll Cage. be in it. They'll have, they'll have a lot of young blood learning the uh, the trade. The trade. While Murray et al. Uh, but not Ramis, because he's teaches. dead. No, yeah. Who else is dead? Uh, no. There's only three of them. Ackroyd, Dac- Murray, Ramis. Yeah, yeah. Ackroyd's weird, isn't he? Doesn't he be, believe in crystals and stuff? Probably. Good. Well done. Nice. You know what I hate about most podcasts other than TLDR? Yeah. They're like, oh, let me just check my notes. High tech. Boring. You know how I do my notes? Whoa, hello. Is that real paper? Yeah. Call back to Vincent van Gogh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On a... Yeah. Well, it says in the... Uh, if you read the history of moleskin... Yeah you'll notice that a lot of uh, famous artists and authors have used paper in the past. So buy a uh, Moleskine notebook. Whereas well, I, I, I like to pronounce them. it properly, I like to say Moleskine, because it has an E on the end. For some reason. Can I, um, where can I find them? Moleskine um, notebooks, eBay. Amazon, yeah. yeah. It's a tenner for the one that I bought though, so. That's expensive. If you're into it. Um, anyway, uh, let me just consult my list, see what's on the list of topics. Number one here for me. ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. Hmm? ALS Ice Bucket Challenge. Yeah. That's been big. Yeah. I feel like that has literally blown up over the last week and only the last week. Yeah, 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 it has. So we've, we're we right on it. We are... Good for us. ...at the precipice of news. Yeah, nice one, us guys. I didn't know what it was for, for ages. ALS. Yeah, but I didn't know what it was. 
What ALS? Yeah. Lou Gehrig's disease and or motor neuron disease and or the thing that Stephen Hawking's got. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Gosh, covered. With the info, it's Phil. Where did it come about? Um, Why the ice water? Does that have any significance whatsoever? Well, some people say that the ice water is supposed to simulate what it's like to have ALS. But I think that's bullshit because apparently it's been around like a while ago. Apparently it started out somewhere, I can't remember where, let's say Scotland. But it might not have been Scotland, it might be Texas or something like that. Yeah. One of those sorts of places. Um, with people jumping into ice pools and then donating money to cancer research. That was uh, started in northern United States. So I was right with northern. Yeah. With Scotland and, to a lesser extent, Texas. Texas. Which is north of, you know, South Other America. Places, yeah, yeah. So, so I was right, really. Good for me. Pat on the back. Pat on the back. Um, I was in Tesco the other day. Yeah. Buying, <laughs> buying some cashews. And the, the clerk who does all the uh, selling duties. He was talking to someone about the ice bucket challenge. He was like, oh, my friend from up down road has done it. And I was like, fuck off. Do you know anyone that's done it? Well, that's that was my attempt. At, that's it. Guy from uh, Tesco Express, maybe his friend from his up friend. down to it road. Yeah. There's a few people who've done it on my Facebook. Oh, yeah? But really, I've only seen celebrities do it. I'm going to be honest. Um, yeah. I'm going to try and find... I've found this, like, huge list of celebrities who've done the uh, ice Yeah, it's on Wikipedia. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there are so many people... I imagine it's just going up and up and up. Because, well, because you nominate three people every time you do it, though. Yeah. You? So it picks up speed pretty quick. One of the funniest things that I saw about the Ice Bucket Challenge, because the idea behind it is that you either pour ice water over your head... Or you pay $100 to ALS, or a donation of your choosing. So some people will say, oh, I'm rich, I have a million, whatever. But the thing that I found funny was I read that President Barack Obama, he was challenged multiple times, I imagine, to the Ice Bucket Challenge, but he just gave $100. He gave $100. Obama, leader of the free world, $100. Here's one note, a crisp note. Yeah, a crisp honey, which I thought was ridiculous. Did you see... A lot of celebrities have just sort of gone, we're really rich. Yeah, yeah. Charlie Sheen did yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And it just had $10,000 in it. Oh, no, wait. That's not ice. That's $10,000. I'm donating it. And, really 50, 50 it cent and Floyd Mayweather have had a bit of uh, back and forth. What came of that? Because I saw the video or a couple of videos yesterday about it. 50 cent, I think he did it. Yeah. And just called him out and yeah. said, if you do it. I'll give $750,000 yeah. to a charity of your choice. And um, Floyd Mayweather responded saying, I'll up it to a million mm-hmm. if you can show me a video of your son telling you he loves you. Whoa. I don't know if they're friends or they're just... They you know, used to be best friends, apparently. Or they're bantering. They used to be. Yeah, and anymore. then um, something happened where Floyd owed him a lot of money and didn't pay him or something like that. But Floyd Mayweather has, like, 500 yeah. million dollars something weird happened but did you not um, see 50's videos the other day I call him 50 because I'm his yeah. homie Fiddy yeah well I just say 50 that's a good one though Fiddy Fiddy I'll bear that in mind hang on write that down I won't write it down but I'll remember it but didn't you see the video of uh, on 50's Instagram Fiddy's Instagram yeah where he says hang on I'll play if you've not seen it I'll play it I've not seen it I'm excited and we can just uh, listen to the audio 50 Cent Instagram. I'm just having a quick browse of people who have done it. Yeah. And I believe they have raised over $50 million thus far. Yeah, it's quite impressive. So well done. Nice one, guys. But there's a list of notable participants put into categories. Yeah. Actors, comedians, directors, musicians, fashion, TV, political, professional wrestling, sports, tech personalities and entrepreneurs. And my favourite one, 1. 1.9, non-human. Non-human? It's a cookie monster. Kermit the Frog. (laughs) Minions from Despicable Me. Yeah. Samsung Galaxy S5. What? <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, uh, the Detroit Pistons mascot. Yeah. And the Bayern Munchen mascot. How How does that work? I'd like to see Kermit do it, really. Look that up as well. We'll have a little watch. What, has he actually done it? Yeah, apparently, according to this. Oh, he actually has done it? Yeah, apparently. And Samsung did it as well. Samsung what? S5, apparently. 
Mm, I'm not sure about that. Anyway, 50s video. Fiddy, Fiddy's video. Fiddy. The special A-S-L-E-L-S challenge for you, Floyd. If you can read one full page of a Harry Potter book, nigga, I'll give oh. 750000 to whatever charitable organization you want to. Fuck the book, guys. And then uh, he posted another one shortly afterwards, maybe a day later. A phone call from my man Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy said that Floyd accepts the challenge that he'll put it on the actual show so you can read it on the show. We don't want to put pressure on you. We know you can't pronounce those words in that Harry Potter book, so we're going to let you read Cat in the Hat. <laughs> it's really funny, 50 Cent is. 50 Cent, I feel, would actually be quite a funny person to hang about with. Yeah, he is. I've, I've hung. We've, we've hung. <laughs> yeah, you've hung out. He's pretty, uh, he's got a good sense. He's got a GSOH. So are him and Floyd not buddies anymore? They hate each other. That's what I gather. Hang on, there's another video I've been posting here today. Oh! I don't know if this is to do with it. Let's watch it. Wait, this should be motherfuckers confused. You put up a check, that got, wait, that must be for a blogger. Nigga, you know I got money. You know I got money, nigga. Look, bitch, the check play golden one. That means you work for Oscar, bitch? Is he eating a plum? <laughs> it looks like he's eating a plum. Which is, it looks like it's almost been Instagrammed by surprise. Yeah, Someone yeah, picks yeah. up. <laughs> Finny Ron, it oh, plum. Put the, fuck you, nigga. Yeah. You know I've got bloody cash. <laughs> bloody cash. <laughs> you know, I started off well with fuck you, nigga, and yeah. then it all went downhill yeah, yeah, from yeah. there. You should have st- stuck with a F U N word. F U N word. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. I don't know if Floyd has. Uh, so do they just like each other? Yeah, apparently. I didn't know this. 50 Cent Floyd Mayweather beef. He's only 37, Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, he's been fighting since he's like 19. Yeah. yeah. Which is a bit of a shame. I'm going to try and find the Kermit the Frog. Ice bucket challenge. Ice bucket challenge. Yeah, here we go. 1 minute 31 seconds. Challenge from WWE's Vince McMahon. Oh, yeah, Vince McMahon. As a pesky amphibian. To which I reply, oh yeah? Being an amphibian, it turns out that evidently getting drenched by freezing cold water could actually make me go totally dormant and my heart could stop. But no matter. <laughs> no matter at all. Half an hour ago, I had 10 bags of ice delivered here to the swamp. And by now, well, they should have melted into several gallons of a freezing cold water. <clears throat> so, not only am I ready and willing to accept this challenge, I am, to my knowledge, the first to do it absolutely naked. So, here we go. But just in case I don't survive, I want to go ahead and send out my Ice Bucket Challenge to my Muppets Most Wanted co-stars, Tina Fey, Ricky Gervais, and Ty Burrell. You guys have got 24 hours. And remember, donate to ALS. Uh, on my count, three, two, one. <laughs> oh dear. I love the Muppets. The Muppets are great. It's brilliant, isn't it? I'm okay. I, um, I found some new information. New info. Which might make the 50 second... <laughs> breaking news. TLDR. Breaking news on TLDR. Episode 10. Episode Breaking news on TLDR. New information. TLDR. Matt's got info. What is it now? Matt's got info gone. 50 seconds. I'm going to go. I've got you there. Just as you brought the drink to your lips. Oh, what a pro! He said... Murdered! Murder on the dance floor! We we heard a moment ago that he said he'll give 750 grand if he can read out a page of a Harry Potter book. Mm -hmm. Well, it's been rumoured for many years that Mayweather can't read. Yeah. I didn't know this. That was... Yeah, yeah, I should have mentioned that, yeah. And it was... The host of a Breakfast Club radio station revealed the ad proof that Mayweather struggles to read. Mm -hmm. The radio host read a drop, which took him 10 seconds to read, but the same drop took Mayweather over two minutes. That's interesting. So he can't read. He's incredibly good at boxing, but not a good reader. Yeah, not great at reading. But the benefit of uh, being a boxer is that you don't need to read to box well. Just punch people in heads. Punch in heads and uh, chests and shoulders. And shins. 
I always go for the shin when I box. Right, to the People shin. don't expect it. Yeah, I just go down. <laughs> I've got very long arms, so I use that to go for the shins. But if Floyd Mayweather hasn't accepted yet, don't you only have 24 hours? Isn't that a common stipulation, as yeah. they say? It reminds me of... Do you remember Naked Nominations? No, what's that? It was a big thing for a while, for about a month until a couple of people died, is where you drink a pint of something yeah. as quick as possible and then nominate somebody else and you have to, like, one-up them. And so people would, like, piss in it or put their own blood in it or it would be, like, a pint oh, of no. neat vodka. Yeah. And people just didn't do very well. It just oh, that's died. terrible. I wouldn't do it. Someone challenged me to drink a pint of something worse than... Oh, I've drank bleach. What about you? I'd be like, fuck off. No. Yeah. I, I, would, I definitely I wouldn't, wouldn't do it. It was big at, like, universities and things. But when was this? Summer? No, it's this... summer now. So it was recently? Like, yeah, beginning of the year, maybe. Really? Yeah. And people died of what? Necking? Well, because they'd drink, like, a pint of vodka and then just die. Neck Cause... it challenge. Neck it nomination, it's called. Cool. Neck it <laughs> nomination. People like ate live fish and things and Really? Dead. I'm clicking on a YouTube video here that says man dies from naked nomination. Yeah. I'm not sure if this is actually Oh it says this was a joke, no alcohol was used. That's a comment. Let's just watch it. Dress as Ronald McDonald. He's drinking a lot of shots and stuff. See, that's not how we do it. Did you I do it? Yeah. I didn't do it, but somebody I lived with did it. Yeah. And you like mix up a load of shit. Right, into a pint glass. Into it? like a jug and then pour it into a glass. Now he's doing a bong though. Yeah, nobody did any bongs. Up. Now he's just smoking a fat dude. Now he's doing some cocaine. I think this is a sketch. This might be a game. Yeah, yeah, this might be a joke. The fact that he was Ronald McDonald should have <laughs> tipped, tipped off. you off. Yeah. But it seems to be massively popular at the minute, but I imagine it'll just die out. Ice Bucket Challenge? Probably by this time next week. Um, everyone will have done it, that's the problem. Because there's only so many famous people in the world, like really famous people. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Like Bush did it, the old did Bush. He? And you know, a few like very When you say the old Bush, which Bush? George Dub. Senior or junior? Junior. So the young Bush, really. Well, yeah, young Bush, but oh, you know. Oh, I mean. a bit of a blunder there. <laughs> bit of a clangor from TLDR stalwart Matthew. <laughs> but, That's a shame. But so many people have done it, there's only so many more that can do it before it's just, well, I don't give yeah. a shit that the Big Brother cast are doing it. And it would die out. Do you have any favourites? I've not really seen many. Uh, the Foo Fighters one was good. Dave Grohl was challenged to do it. And he recreated a scene from Carrie. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's quite long though, I'm not going to play it. Fuck off, Foo Fighters. Yeah, no, I've not really seen many. Charlie Sheen's... What was the first one you saw? The first one I saw was Bill Gates. Uh, And I thought it was just something he was doing, I didn't know it was a... Stephanie McMahon. Oh, yeah. (laughs) The daughter of Vince. Nice, nice, nice. Who did she challenge? Vince, I think. So she led to that Kermit one we just watched. Yeah, and Ronda Rousey tipped the water on her. Really? Yeah, it was at SummerSlam. Does Ronda Rousey... Wrestle? No, she's a big wrestling fan. She's a wrestling oh, fan. Really? I was going to say. A UFC bantamweight female champion. Yeah. Like me, I am. Yeah, you are as well. Also. But no, it's it. I'm, I don't really have any problems with it. People are like, oh, it's a waste. Yeah, people yeah. think it's slacktivism. Water. Yeah, there's that as well, because there's a huge California drought going on at the minute. Have you seen those pictures of the California drought? No, is it there's that? pictures of the lakes and uh, rivers from like 2011. And then pictures of them now in 2014, and they're like, you can see like a mile of bank. Jesus. It's terrible. Maybe not a mile. America's a crazy place. I don't want yeah. to live there for the weather. The weather's just horrible. But they have weird weather in America. Oh, yeah, I'm looking at it now. Jesus. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? They're That's dropped up. Yeah. yeah. So I wonder how much of that is because of the Ice Bucket Challenge, probably all of it. Well, I've got a tweet right here. Yeah. California's in a drought, and people's throw water over their heads. Who said that? Uh, Dave's Julie. Dave's Julie. Yeah. You've earned yourself a little cheeky TFC network retweet. Retweet. Well done. Ah. Ding, 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 ding. Did you hear Pamela Anderson refuse to do it? Why? 
Um, because she said experiments into treatments for motor neurons disease have involved cruel animal testing. Oh, fucking... <laughs> so she was just like, I'm not going to do it. Jesus Christ. That's probably... That has probably got more attention for ALS than if, if Pamela Anderson had actually done it. Because no one cares about Pamela Anderson. She's got to be like 50. She's so old now. She's fairly old, I would have thought. 47. Close. Yeah, you're pretty close. Um, yeah, she's a dreadful person. We've probably been challenged by, by this point. I imagine so. I imagine we've just had a flood in. Do you know what? Let's do it now. Live on the podcast. Yeah. You go first. Tip it on your head. Don't have any ice water on me. I've got some. Here you go. Look. I feel like I'm making a mockery of the... <laughs> no, do, no, go on. Oh, is it cold? Not really. I'm, I'm going to do it. Oh, oh, oh that's so freezing. Brr, that's so cold. I nominate the Pope. The Pope. Uh, that would be a great one. <laughs> Thank we you. We got the Pope to do it. Uh, who else? Who's quite? Who's quite an up and comer? Who's quite an A-lister? Who's an A-lister? that's up and coming. Uh, Waggy. Yeah, Waggy, ex TFC Network podcaster. Yeah. And uh, you. <laughs> Me. Ha. Yeah. You've already done it though, so... I have. That's a shame. You have to donate. Did you see steve was one? No. Was he, it wacky? Yeah, he just went on a bit of a rant about how nobody's, um... Actually talking about donating on their videos. They just sort of throw it over the head and go, yay! Oh, right. Yeah. So have you got it? No. Oh. That's a shame. Yeah, well, I was... You know, at first, I was a bit up in the air about the whole is it slacktivism thing? Is it actually going to make a difference? Because so many people are saying, oh, pouring ice over your head doesn't make a difference, doesn't it? It's not, gonna, it's not the same thing as donating money. But it has raised millions. Yeah, it's raised 50 million plus, apparently. Which is a lot. So, yeah, I mean, for the amount of people that have done it, like if you're looking at name value, mm. 50 million is probably not that much. Yeah, but it's more than if there was no ice bucket challenge. Oh, yeah, no, I'm not saying it's pointless. But I'm saying for the amount of people that have done it, 50 million seems a lot. Mm. And it has happened very quickly, but it's not a huge amount. Yeah, but I don't feel like m most of those people would have donated anyway. Do we know how many people have done it? What? In, how are we There's supposed to know that? There's no way of knowing, is there? <laughs> I thought maybe someone had, you know... Logged them all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I don't know. Celebrity-wise, I imagine there's loads. And then all the people who aren't celebrities. Yeah, celebrity-wise, there would be um, quite a lot. I had that list open, but... I've got it here. I feel like I've Lowe's. closed it by mistake. Is it Lowe's? Have you yeah, tallied that? Let me just double-check. Yes. Loads. Loads. As of current updating, it's... How much 551 is it? people on here. On the celebrity list? Yeah. That's all the celebrities? All of them. Yeah, Done. 551. How many celebrities are there? <laughs> Again, well, that's really... <laughs> I don't know. I'm so, How am I supposed to answer that question? <laughs> I'm not posing the question at you. Loads, saying, I imagine. In what? the world, like Colombia has celebrities you wouldn't even have heard of. I don't know about that. <laughs> no, they would. No, I don't think so. I, if they were big enough, I'd, I, that would have got to me eventually. Yeah. But I'd know about them, Matt. But people that we consider big or recognisable wouldn't yeah. be recognisable in France, for instance. Yeah, by the idiots from France, but I'm pretty... I've got my finger on the pulse. I yeah. know about... Uh, Name Colombian five Well, I can't French exactly. Celebrities. Yeah, that's because there aren't any. That woman who was in... Uh, have you seen that film? Now You See It. No. I watched it last night. Is it good? It was all right. It's a newish film. It's got Woody Harrelson, uh, Jesse Eisenberg... That French woman. Yeah. Mark Ruffalo. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dave... Chappelle. Franco. <laughs> Franco. Oh. And then a, a woman. Yeah. I don't know her name. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's, uh, it's about magic. It's not bad. Oh, I know what you mean, yeah. yeah. But yeah, French woman was in that. Yeah. Has she done the Ice Bucket Challenge? Let's find out. Probably not. I'm going to put it no. Right, you're, you're going to say no. How much money are you going to put on that? I will give a hundred dollars to ALS if she's done it. I believe that since we're in England, you might have to donate to the Motor Neuron. Nope. No? No. You're going to give to ALS? I'll only give to ALS. Okay. All right. Uh, 
She's probably the one with the French uh, the French face. name, yeah, a little accent over the E. Not not face, no. She doesn't look French. Oh, she was in Inglorious Bastards. That's where I knew her from. Right, her name is Me- Melanie Laurent. Right. Is she related to Sophia Lauren? Is Sophia Lauren spelled L A U R E N T? No. Okay. Guess what the first suggestion is. Ice bucket challenge. No feet. Feet. It's always feet. It always it? is, isn't it? Ice bucket. Oh, it doesn't look like she's done it. Oh well, you owe me a hundred dollars. <laughs> no, <laughs> not how it works whatsoever. Yes. No. Yes. I don't think biscuit so. Biscuit time for me. Yeah. I'll have a biscuit. You, you can't you... get the piss. Right. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> there you go. Have Oh, thank you. No, but I, I'm pleased for. The sufferers of ILS. Yeah. Me and me, I'm pleased for him. Yeah. I imagine it's, um... People are too uber cynical about this. Like, oh, the money's gonna, just gonna get, go nowhere. People should do more, blah, blah, blah. Give, it's too, you know, self-congratulatory. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Who cares? There is that, but... But it is raising a lot of money. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. I say... A last ice bucket challenge. Thumbs up. Thumbs from up. From Talia. If we get nominated. When? When we get nominated. Yeah. We'll do it. It'll be hilarious. We'll yeah. have to do it outside. Yeah. Not doing it in TFC Towers. We'll do it by the lake. By TFC Lake? Yeah. Pod Lake Park. Hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay then. Cool. What have you got? I've got a lot of stories that sort of come together as one. Oh yeah? Well not as one but have the same sort of what's the uh, overlying genre what's the genre so I'm going to give you options to choose from you can have okay. internet piracy mm-hmm. recycling Ooh. well recycling stroke environment uh, dead animals <laughs> dead people <laughs> yeah or Pope News I'm going to go for the obvious one Pope News Pope News yeah I love a bit of Pope News we haven't had Pope News in a while, have we? No, not for a few weeks. But whenever the Pope does something, we'll be there for we'll, right, you know, TLDR Pope News. Well, it's actually a bit of um, sad Pope News. Oh no, what's happened? This week. Um, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Dead air for a minute. Deal with it. I don't know if you actually want there to be dead air. I'd love there to be. Go on. Pope Francis has publicly broached the prospect of his own death for the oh, first no. time, giving himself two or three years at most. But, really? But not ruling out retirement before then. Talking to reporters on a flight back to the Vatican after his successful inaugural trip to Asia, the 77-year-old pontiff was asked about his global popularity. And he said, two or three years, and then I'll be off to the Father's house. Wait, is he dying or is he going to his dad's house? No, father is in. Oh, oh God! Oh, Lord and Savior. Yeah, no, no, yeah, I, I know, I knew. I love, I love the big man upstairs. He's got pray all the time. If he's listening, I big fan. Have you work? I think you're great. One, one love jar. The Irie. The Pope admitted that he had some nerve problems, which required treatment. Bit nervous before gigs. He joked. Must treat them well, these nerves. Give them a mate, an Argentinian stimulant tea, <laughs> every day. One of these neuroses is that I'm too much of a homebody, he added, recalling that the last time he'd taken a holiday outside of his native Argentina was with the Jesuit community in 1975. What? Doesn't he go around, you know, touring Pope? Yeah, but I'm, I think he meant before he became Pope. Oh, right. He just likes his home. Yeah. And obviously this has caused a lot of, you know, concern and uproar on the internet. The, um... Top comment on the article mm-hmm. says he's most likely been poisoned for ad- advocating for social justice. <laughs> Probably has. If I was poisoned by a, an attempted would-be assassin, and it had essentially worked, and I knew I had two more years to live, I'd give an interview about it. But if they didn't ask, I probably wouldn't say that it was assassin. I'd it. leave it out. Just leave it. Because if people wanted to know, they'd ask. I'd be polite about it. Just wouldn't say. 
Not relevant info, is it? Paul Pope. Paul Pope. That's interesting then, so he's going to die. Well, he, he thinks he's going to die, or is, is that he's going to become too unwell and retire. Which is just becoming a bigger and bigger thing, because you have to be a certain age to have gone through bishops, cardinals, whatever it is, mm. to get, you know, on the panel of people that could be the next Pope. You also literally have to be a certain age, don't you? I imagine you have to be over, like, 40, but it's yeah. not like Pope John Paul was quite young when he got it. Was he? But then he died, was it, like, 2008? Yeah. When we had crazy Ratzinger. Benedict. Yeah, Ratzinger. Ratzinger? Yeah. He called himself Benedict. And then he stepped down, and then we've had this guy, he stepped... But, like, Pope John Paul was there for, like, 30, 40 years. Yeah. He was a very uneventful Pope, and then we had a really... Someone did try to kill him once. Well, I would still say it's uneventful. Before but our time. I'm always... He was fucking old in our life. Like, he must have been, like, 80 plus when he died. He was, like, nearly 90, I think. Yeah. And so when we were born, he probably would have been in his 70s. Yes. So he's old as shit. And he was famous well, for he would like have charismatic. Been in his, probably in his 60s, wouldn't he? How old was he when he died? Late 80s? Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. He's being um, beatified, isn't he? Is he? I believe so. Does that mean made into a saint? Made into a saint. Why? Well, saint yeah. of what? Because he's boy fucking. Oh, yeah. That does make sense. Everyone That's... really liked him. He died... Aged... Oh, oh, you're talking about John Paul, yeah. Aged... Yeah, John Paul. What are you talking about, Ratzinger? He died 85. He was born in 20. So he would have been set in his 70s when we were born. Yeah. Old bastard. Lovely guy, though. Pope. Everyone seemed to like him. Then we had a shitty Pope. Yeah, then there was an Everyone really hated. evil Pope for a while. He was like, oh, isn't that youth? And then he stepped down because he was old. Still alive, though, so if he was really committed to the job, he'd still be there. Yeah. And then we had this new guy, and everyone's like, yeah, new Pope, popularity, brilliant, he's saying nice things, use condoms, don't hate gays, ain't that so all right, love blacks, feed the poor. And then he's like, I'm probably off in a year or two then. The thing is, though, I, in my opinion, Pope, what's his name now? Francis. Francis, see, I've not even had time to get used to him. Pope Francis. Pope Francis the 15th. Yeah, Frank. I call him Frank. Yeah. Because we're homies. But he's, he seems to be great and everyone's like, oh, look at this great, amazing, progressive Pope. But it's only in comparison to like... The shit of Pope. Ratzinger, yeah. Like, what, everything, nothing, he's never, he's not said anything groundbreaking or amazing. He's said things that he's most people already cleaned. think. He's coming in Yeah, yeah, he's clean. Basically, a dog's walked through the house and shit everywhere. Yeah. And the guy, a guy's come through and picked up all the shit. Yeah. So you suddenly realise how nice the house is again. Yeah, that's a good way of thinking about it. Um, yeah, he's not done anything crazy. He's not broken any new ground. He's just gone... You know all the sort of major opinions that the majority of people, I including so the well. majority of Catholics, probably think, yeah, God's all right with it. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. He's gone, it's cool. But I don't believe it, and you shouldn't believe it, but if people do, it's cool, whatever. Is the official position of the Catholic Church that the Pope literally communicates with God, as but, in, like, speaks to him, or... Do they use? Do they say that he communicates with God, and that's open to being a metaphor or a symbol of something? I'm not sure. I believe him to be like. Isn't he the embodiment to a certain extent, like the closest, closest human to being God? No, no, that doesn't sound right. Let's find out. Because I always thought that the Pope is meant to sort of talk to God. And then basically be the translator. Well, he's God's middle advocate, ground. isn't he? Yeah, not advocate. That's not the right word. Like um, it's his, his little mate, his little yeah, like salacious crumb. They all have very deep set eyes, popes. It's something I've noticed. Think about it. <coughs> These are people. You know, the Pope, a child's word for father. What Pope comes from the Latin papa. Yeah. In father yeah. uh, is the Bishop of Rome and the leader of the worldwide Catholic, worldwide Catholic Church the importance of the Roman Bishop is largely derived from his role as the traditional successor to Saint, Saint Peter, Peter. Yeah. to whom Jesus gave the keys of heaven and the powers of binding and losing naming him as the rock upon which the church would be built the current Pope is Francis who was elected on 13th of March 2013 blah 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 what are the keys of heaven? In ecclesiastical heraldry, papal coats of arms. Oh, this is a coat of arms. Um, 
According to Roman Catholic teaching, Jesus gave to St. Peter the keys of heaven, empowering him to take binding actions. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus says to Peter, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. End quote from Jesus. End quote. Yeah, that's interesting, because I'm never sure when it comes to teachings of particular churches yeah i'm never sure whether the people who are members of that church because i'm not religious so i'm never sure whether they believe it in a literal sense or whether they think of it as symbolic of something else or a metaphor or whatever well i think historically within the catholic church it would have been literal wouldn't it because these people were also rulers and led people into war Mm. And so they were literally, I, I'm telling you what God's saying, so come on. I'm so, in charge around here now. So is that what they would teach now? Like if I went up and asked to the Pope, if, if I went up and said to the Pope, did Jesus give St. Peter an actual smithed key made of metal that you put in a lock that opens up to, ke- to heaven? Would he say yes? Or would he say, eh, you know, it's all a metaphor, it's a symbol for uh, I'm- opening your own heart? Yeah, I imagine he'll tell you that. Do you reckon? Because they talk about the, the, you know, the Holy Communion. Yeah. Eating a little Jaffa cake or whatever. It becomes I mean, God's flesh. Isn't it? Yeah, isn't it supposed to literally be his flesh though? That's what I've. Hang on. Communion wafers and wine is the blood of Christ. Yeah, but I mean, it, as soon as it enters your mouth, like it, be, or you swallow it, yeah. Because it brings Eucharist you closer to Christ. The Eucharist also called Holy Communion. The Lord's Supper and other names is a sacrament accepted by almost all Christians. It is reenacted in accordance with Jesus' instruction at the Last Supper, as recorded in several books in the New Testament. Um, in remembrance of when Jesus gave his disciples bread, saying, This is my body, and gave them wine, saying, This is my blood. But what did he mean by that? What did he mean what by that? Mean? Class. <coughs> Here we go, Catholic. The Catholic Church teaches that once consecrated in the Eucharist, the elements cease to be bread and wine and actually become the body of Christ. And the the source for that is from some fucking university website, so I, you know. It's bullshit though, isn't it? It's one of those things that <coughs> it's great to, you know, teach the kids and People took it literally probably for centuries and centuries and centuries. Yeah. But you're almost at a point now... Just got to shake off the uh, trousers, Karen. Where even if you believe that to be true, you believe it to be true on almost a sort of faith, spiritual level where it's not actually Jesus' flesh, but a representation and, you know, you become closer to Christ and this and that. I mean, the thing... The thing I... My thing is, like, when it comes to ritual and stuff like that, I think most ritual obviously has value, otherwise people wouldn't have been doing it for so long. And it's usually, my understanding is that most rituals serve to teach you something that you couldn't learn through words alone. And so, to take a ritual and strip it of its symbolic meaning by saying, no, this is literally true, you're making it mundane. Like, I don't see, what's the point of eating Jesus? If it doesn't mean anything. It's... I always believed it to be like, it brings you closer, you know, this is... To Christ. Yeah, a remembrance of what he did and his sins and this and giving his body. Yeah. And, and leaving his life and his body and that whole thing to save us from our sins. And yeah, yeah. Ascending. Yeah. And then never having that again. I mean, whatever, you know, if people get something from it symbolically then that's all good but I imagine a lot of people do it and just think oh you know this is just something you do at church and it's literally well yeah I imagine for a, for a lot of people that's what it says I'm on catholic dot uh, org here oh yeah let's have a look here oh it's a very long page is this about the Eucharist yeah why is the Eucharist not only a meal but also a sacrifice um why is it a sacrifice? When the bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ. Why do they still look and taste like bread and wine is one of the questions. Oh, go on, read it. 
In the celebration of the Eucharist, the glorified Christ becomes present under the appearance of bread and wine in a way that is unique, a way that is uniquely suited to the Eucharist. In the church's traditional theological language, in the act of consecration during the Eucharist, the substance of bread and wine is changed by the power of the Holy Spirit into the substance of the body and blood of Christ. At the same time, the accidents of appearance of bread and wine remain. Substance and accidents are here used as philosophical terms that have been adapted by great medieval theologians, such as Aquinas, in their efforts to understand and explain the faith. Next paragraph here, it says, This is a great mystery of our faith. We can only know it from Christ's teaching given to us in the scriptures and in the tradition of the church. Every other change that occurs in the world involves a change in accidents or characteristics. Sometimes the accidents change while the substance remains the same. So what does accidents mean? I'm going to Google accidents. Substance and accident. Accidents is the fact that while the substance of it has changed, yeah. the appearance is still of bread and wine. All oh, right. It says here, look, in the act of consecration during the Eucharist, the substance, i.e. the bread and wine, is changed mm -hmm. by the power of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. into the substance, like the body and blood of Christ. At the same time, the accidents or appearances of bread and wine remain. There are loads of different ways that you can interpret that because you can interpret it as meaning that the accidents of something is its actual m matter yeah, and molecules and stuff that make it up and the substance of something is sort of in your mind. And in that sense, you could say that it's literally yeah. the substance is literally if, changed because it's the way you think of it. It comes down to definitions, doesn't it? If yeah. the if thing is that it changes into the you know substance of the body and blood of Christ and that is a sort of feeling... <laughs> Or a yeah connection of any kind, then yeah, yeah. it's called transubstantiation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would. What was what was the question? The sub subheading. Uh, when the bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ, why do they still look like bread and wine? I would say because Christ just tasted like bread and wine. <laughs> if you if you went back in time and tasted Christ, you'd say you taste a lot like wafer. I don't know why. I know I've found I've ran into this in the past when people have bit me and so on does the bread cease to be bread and the wine cease to be wine yes in order for the whole christ to be present body blood soul and divinity the bread and wine cannot remain must give way so that his glorified body and blood may be present which is the exact opposite of what we were saying about yeah yeah that's meaning, <laughs> completely opposite so thus in the eucharist the bread ceases to be bread in substance and becomes the body of christ while the wine becomes the blood of christ as aquinas observed christ is quoted as saying this bread is my body yeah no he's not quoted as saying this oh. bread is my body but this is my body what so he has the bread yeah and he's not saying this oh. bread is my body he's, he's saying, saying this is my body is my body and then he holds up the wine and says this is my blood i imagine so instead no not saying this wine is it's just saying that it is all his body what, what he's giving oh, to you right, is right. his body it's almost like that everything is on the same it's like like if you look at eastern philosophy we were talking about this the other day i think yeah yeah like uh, in hinduism for example um their conception of god is brahman and atman and brahman is the universal self yeah and atman is your ego and in that sense you could you could like you know it's a bit first year philosophy student ish thing to say but you could be like, oh, that's me, and that's me, and that's me. Yeah, like when people say, me. Like when people say, I'm star stuff, or whatever. Like Neil deGrasse Tyson is fond of saying that. Like, oh, we're the stuff of stars. We're made out of the atoms found in stars. That is a prime example of that, though. Yeah, if that's what he meant. If if what you're saying to me is that Jesus Christ was the proto Neil deGrasse Tyson, then <laughs> sure, I agree. Yeah, possibly. Agree. Yeah, cool. They were both black scientists in a way just tweeting about uh, transubstantiation by what? tweeting I mean just retweeting uh, Catholic Twitter pages what do they say when you see a cute Catholic in church using words like transubstantiation Eucharistic adoration and apostistic succession you get and such a boner and then it's a picture of Ron from Harry Potter <laughs> <laughs> and he's all that's poor and shit. Um, that's interesting though Predictions on the next Pope, what do you reckon? Black. Black? Yeah. That's interesting, because that's definitely not going to happen. <laughs> it's going to happen one day. 
Do you think so? What are the what yeah. do you need to be Pope? Let's see if I can you find need to be out. Like a bishop of somewhere big. There's a black guy in the running this time. He's like was there? Yeah. Right. I mean, he was never in the running because he was black. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, we we can't have a black lead our church, of course. What about a woman? Would that be allowed? It wouldn't, would it? No. Um, I think people would go mental. Well, I think that's literally not allowed as well. Because, um, well, the real the real reason will have been lost in history, wouldn't it? But, I mean, we just read a minute ago that Pope comes from the Latin Papa, meaning father. And maybe before that from the Greek, Papas. So it can't father. be a woman. Yeah, not, I mean, not because of that, but, like, obviously, traditionally, Catholic uh, bishops and so on. Catholic clergymen are men. Are men. men, not women. Exactly. Yeah. Which is a bit of a shame, but maybe not. Because who cares? Yeah. Catholicism, that's gone, in it? Dying out. I think next up, people are just going to listen to podcasts for their, <laughs> for their spiritual really. fulfilment. They'll be fucking bowing down at the church of TLDR. Oh, no. That's at nice. the altar of Jake Kyber MD. We'll have to sweep up. So that they're... Uh, got biscuit in you. you got a biscuit in your drink? Yeah. In your honey whiskey? Mm. What do you think good. of the honey whiskey? It's quite sickly. It it's quite, quite it's very sweet. whiskey I've ever had. Yeah, yeah. I can't tell if it's like... Where did you get it? What what sort of... I got it in a bag. Someone said... Oh, someone get it. Open yeah. this on your birthday. So I opened it four days before my birthday. And drank <laughs> it live on TLDR at 10. Because that's the kind of shit I do. Woo! I'm a, I'm a bad guy. Right, that was Pope News then. Pope News. Pope News. Pope News. Next up, Facebook. Have you? I've got an account. I've signed up quite recently to Facebook. Oh yeah. You can find me facebook.com forward slash jkivermd. Is that your actual Facebook? Yeah. Now you're going to get so many people. Well, I get friend requests, but I can just ignore them if they're uggos. Yeah, but we've got millions of listeners, so... You know... We can only have up to 5,000 friends, and then it says, This person's got too many friends. (laughs) It's making me jealous. Uh, Something weird is happening on Facebook. They're rolling out a new feature. Do you know what it is? Have you heard of it? No, I've not heard of this. They're implementing a satire tag. So when someone shares a satirical news article, it's tagged satire... It'll come up in big, bold letters. Yeah. Satire! <laughs> Don't worry, everybody. It's this is a joke. joke. Not news. <laughs> Go about your day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. College humour. Yeah. How do you feel about that? I feel it ruins a lot of jokes. Yeah, I agree. As someone who enjoys a good piece of satire... Yeah. If every bit of satire... Hang on a minute. We should start doing satire on the podcast. Oh, I'm that writing could that get down. somewhere. I'm Put writing that in that the down. notebook. That's a good idea. Sorry, go on. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just thought when an idea strikes, Try I think of myself down. as a modern Van Gogh. Vincent Van. Yeah, Vincent Van Gogh. So oh. I've got to, just got to write that down quickly. Sat. Tire. I'm gonna have to have a cigarette to celebrate. I hope you don't mind. Right, no, sorry. You were you're in the middle of something. Go on. Well, it takes away from the joke. It's basically, the point of satire is that even if you know it's satire, yeah. it's nice to realise it's satire, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's nice to go, ah, oh, they're making a joke about X or Y, or they're yeah. parodying this, or they're mocking up this. To have it in bold right there ruins the joke. Yeah. I feel like part of the um, merit of satire as well is that it, it's almost like a horror story of what society or whatever you set or as in could be like if you don't make a change in some sort of aspect yeah. so like you get all sorts of satirical like here's one tips for being an unarmed black teen obviously satire about the whole Ferguson thing yeah and it's sort of if you imagine that that was real it sort of makes you realise that there's a problem that exists yeah and also joking is a fundamental way of criticising things and it's it's nice and easy and entertaining and light-hearted and it's just a good thing to do to joke about things to satirise things and to to, sort of, to sort of just put that in a corner and just say oh no that's only a part of this greater thing 
Especially about things that have Rumors caused it. a lot of pain or upset. Like, yeah. I don't know the exact quote, but I think it was Mel Brooks was talking about... Mel B. So, yeah. Yeah. Because he did The Producers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. He, he was, like, Jewish and, you know, he was a, I don't know if he was around at the time of the war or his parents in the Holocaust, you know, something. But a lot of people said, you know, this is Hitler, he caused a huge amount of, like, damage to your people. Mm. And he was like, well, if you don't satirise and bring these people down to a level where you can mock them and make the pain less, if that yeah, makes sense. It's like, almost... it, it'd be better if I had the exact quote and I wasn't yeah. butchering it horribly. He, I'll see if I can find it, but I always think, I always remember hearing it, and while I don't remember what he actually said... <laughs> well, it's, it's a good point, though, because it's almost like saying to say that someone, someone or something is beyond satire is tantamount to revering it. And that's true, really. Like satirising something automatically brings it down to a level where it's worth satirising. Yeah. And so to say, oh no, Hitler's too important to satirise is to say Hitler's important. Good point, Mel B. He would have been, by the way, a little tidbit of info, he would have been about 20 when the when WW2 ended. With comedy, we can rob Hitler of his po- posthumous power. There you go. That's the title of this article. Oh, you're right. So it was less of a quote. No, no, this is an article. This is just an article in which the quote is, but I, I can't bother to read all of it. The Jews were horrified. I received resentful letters of protest saying, how can you make jokes about this? The man murdered six million Jews. Uh, the mm. philosophy of the film is people can go over anything. No, they can You know. Yeah. Yeah, I can't find it, but... I mean, this... The thing is, though... By using the me- medium of comedy, we can try to rob Hitler of his posthumous power and myths. In doing so, we should remember that Hitler did have some talents, but he was a, few- a fool. He was able to fool an entire population into letting him be their leader. However, this role was basically a few numbers too great for him. Oh, this is him doing jokes again. Oh, fucking Mel B, come on. Oh, he's doing the jokes. Yeah, piss me off. But yeah, he's basically saying, by satirising or mocking or, you know, anything that's mm. caused like pain and upset. Yeah. You rob it, not not rob it, but you diminish that power it has to hurt. Yeah. Because if you have something that's untouchable, it'll always be untouchable. Yeah. And also, if you designate something as being untouchable, you're also sort of saying that it's Worthy necessarily, of yeah, like powerful or important, you know. And the, the satire tag thing obviously doesn't get rid of satire, and satire will still be funny if you know it's satire, otherwise no one would ever go to the onion. Yeah, but at the same time, it's it's diminishing the power of satire because it's saying this is something that's just you know worth being considered as purely satire. Well, well, satire in general. It's like saying that satire in general is something that we should just know, we should know where it is and it should know its place and it's you know boxed into this thing. Yeah. It's like it's almost disconnecting satire from the real world and almost as if it's... It's almost like saying that satire isn't important, which I think is just wrong. There are, there are people who... Hang on, I've found an article here in The Science of Us, which is... Or maybe Science of US, I don't know. It's from a New York magazine, nymag.com. And uh, the, art, the title of this article is Why Facebook Satire Tag is Necessary and Why Smart People Fall for Fake News. Basically, they've pointed out various things. They interviewed people about it, and they pointed out various things like um, the satire tag might stop hoaxes from spreading, and uh, they point to that. You remember Colbert? Yeah. The whole Redskins thing. I can't remember exactly what it was, but something about the Redskins football, the baseball team, I don't know, some sort of sport team, came up where... um, People were saying it was racist. And Colbert satirised it by saying it's not racist. And I think we should rename something else to something like the Ching Chong yeah. F- Foundation for Orientals or whatever or something like yeah. that. Do you not remember this? No. I'll see if I can find it instead of just guessing. Stephen Colbert Redskins. Eight minute video? I don't know about that. Um, but I understand what you're saying. I mean, the, the thing is with this is that loads of people didn't realise it was satire. And so he was, um, you know, he was 
called he was taken to task with like salon.com and stuff like that well what there was a big thing about it but I mean that's not co- that's not really a problem I don't see why we should have to try to avoid that that seems like mo- molly coddling the thing is there's always going to be people who don't understand jokes yeah jokes of any kind it doesn't matter what it is and that doesn't mean you should stop telling jokes exactly you can't the only, the only way those people will learn is from more exposure to jokes and so if we separate jokes from actual discourse you're, what you're doing there is you're saying that jokes aren't actual discourse and jokes are something lesser than actual discussion yeah. so people will never encounter jokes in the wild it's molly cuddling it's just like it's, it's really it's good I mean if, if a generation of people is raised with the idea that you need to say that you're about to tell a joke before you tell a joke they'd be all fucked up yeah, it, it, <laughs> it it's not a good thing. It's it, obviously a bad idea. It'll make people more stupid. Yeah, more sensitive as well. Yeah, because then you're going to come across something one day that's satire. I mean, I do... I do satire. I'm a big satirist. No, but you know... Well, we are ever since I had the brilliant idea of doing satire on the podcast. You, know, you, you make... written down... When, whether they're clever or not, you satirise all sorts of things just in everyday conversation with people if yeah, yeah, you never you experience that then you're going to have shock and uproar and pain and hurt that's caused from innocent satire in the everyday life if I go on Facebook and everything that's satire you say satire this is satire yeah. before you even read it it's it's going to be a joke so don't take any you know whatever whether it's offensive or not it doesn't matter but just know that this isn't really what it, it says it is mm. then when I say something that does I don't really mean what I'm saying, I'm satirising something, then I'm going to cause a lot of upset, unnecessary upset. Yeah, it's, yeah. Just a, it's just a nightmare. It's removing a large portion of the uh, potential for subtext. It's like, it's really, it's, it, it's almost a crippling... Also, surely it takes away, I mean, I don't, I don't, oh, fuck. I don't know about this, I haven't really read into it at all, but surely it takes away from the layering of jokes. How do you mean? Because if I... You know, the, some of the best comedy of all time is, like, very cleverly well-done satire. I mean, Thank you can you. joke and I Cheers. can go, oh, yeah, niggas, blah, 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 whatever, you know, and go, yeah. oh, black people, they like to stab people. Oh, it's satire, they don't really, but whatever. But some of the best, like, social cutting satire, whatever it is, yeah. surely that will be taken away because the concept of satire will be diminished. Yeah. Because people won't... Won't be so used to it. Well, yeah, they won't be so used to it. Or they'll and be used to being warned and they might take offence of, of not being warned. That's a danger. And so the the very best satire that's clever on many levels, face value, and it's, you know, it's hidden message. Yeah. Is, you know, taken away. And thus we're running a risk of losing a sort of very esteemed form of comedy yeah and also just a part of human com- communication I mean I think the reason that it's such a popular part of comedy is that it's inherent to the way humans communicate you know sarcasm irony satire whatever you want to call it saying something you don't mean with the subtext of uh, with with a rhetorical intention you know by exaggerating your meaning or some way it's a really powerful way to exaggerate what you're saying and you can't sometimes that can't be achieved without satire and so it's you know it's a it's a part of human communication it's part of how we communicate it's also to a certain extent how people like to deal with things yeah yeah you're it's taking you're to... taking away a method in which people comfort themselves or others yeah yeah definitely because you're coming back to like the mel brooks idea of things his satire of Hitler Holocaust Nazi Germany etc was for his own comfort to bring him down to a level or bring that whole terrible ordeal that him and his family and millions and millions of people suffered to a level that you can laugh at and thus find comforting and while something like that you'll never get over but on a much smaller scale the use of satire can help massively yeah I, I would even go further and say that to use the Holocaust as an example again, by satirising the Holocaust and by satirising Hitler and so on, 
you open it up for a more honest discussion. Because if you're revering it as this important thing and, oh, you mustn't joke about it, yeah. then there are loads of things you can't say and you, f- you feel like you're stepping on eggshells when you talk about it. Like, there are a lot of things that you can't suggest. You can't suggest that... I mean, I don't believe this necessarily, but you wouldn't be able to suggest that, oh, maybe we've learned something from the Holocaust. Well, I sort of believe that. But maybe we've learned something from the Holocaust. Maybe we could consider it a, um, a gift in some way, you know. Yeah. These are things that people will be scared of saying. Well, because you put it, it you put it on revered. a platform. Yeah. yeah. You put it on a platform above yourself. Yeah. And above the world you live in. Yeah. And while, to a certain extent, it is, and it's a horrible thing and whatever, etc., it is still a thing within human existence. Yeah. And to re- not to revere it, but I don't know what the opposite of that really is, but to put it outside of your life, outside of, well, we can't, we can't discuss this. Mm. It's, like, it's sort of taboos in general. Yeah. Is when you can't talk about something. Yeah, and you're unable to reframe it in a positive way. Then it, it just, it never, never ends well. Yeah, I feel yeah. that any I kind of taboos too. that people have, you know, questions or thoughts about, yeah. and they don't have a venture, not a venture, an opportunity to, like, voice them or talk about them. Yeah. Ends terribly. It eventually just turns into an arbitrary fear of talking about that thing for no reason other than to keep up that taboo because it's expected. And imagine if the, quote, satire tag, imagine if, like, that sort of thing was standard uh, when Mel Brooks wrote, like, The Producers, for example. Yeah. Then it'd almost be saying, like, after the show, for example, I couldn't have a conversation with someone about um, Hitler and about the Holocaust and so on. Yeah. Um, with the intention to talk about it honestly and jokingly. and Because a part of being honest is the joke. Because it's part of yeah. how people honestly communicate. It's humor is, you know, it's part of how we honestly communicate. And if I, if I, if I, if that, if that show was like, oh, this is satire, don't worry about it. Yeah. And I would feel afterwards as if I wasn't allowed to join that conversation because I don't have a satire tag over what I'm saying. Yeah. So you'd feel. Well, it's, it's part a... one of one of the big benefits of satire is that it brings it down onto a level that you can talk about it honestly and yeah. openly and jokingly. It brings that, it down to where you are. Yeah, and that's that. If you're not under the satire tag as well, then you that's that effect is lessened. It's not so much that anymore. It's not so much. This is something we can talk about jokingly because, no, it's not. This is something that the designated satirists can talk about can talk jokingly about, and honestly, yeah. but we we can't. So what what's their argument for doing it that it will prevent the spread of hoaxes? Yeah, um, they they feel as though the newsfeed is flooded with. All these fake. I mean, to be fair, it's true that there are a lot of. You have, for example, like the Onion. Yeah. And their their other website, Clickhole. Yeah. Which are fairly well known websites for satire. If you don't know that they're satire, you probably will at some point. You'll probably come across them. Um, and then you have other websites that just sound like normal websites. I'll see if I can find some uh, examples. They are, they are satire. Yeah, um, the so- Daily Current, Empire News, National Report, The News Nerd. They all just sound like websites, but yeah. they're satire, and they tend to post articles that don't sound like a joke. That are yeah, yeah. But so, but that's a form of satire. What do what do Facebook gain from telling everybody that this this is satire? Isn't it? I don't know. Purely, you know, maybe it's quite a cynical viewpoint, but isn't it purely means of controlling humour? Well, I... in the I don't know. It's, it does have a bit of the whole placate the masses feel to it. Surely satire, to a certain it. extent, is always going to have people that doesn't understand that satire is always going to yeah. have that side of it. And there are satirists, websites, whatever it is, that play on that. Yeah. And like like you say, those articles that seem normal and seem like you'd see them everywhere, they're almost playing on the fact that a lot of people will think this is real. Yeah, possibly. But it is satire. And so you're... By Facebook saying, well, you have to come out straight away and say, you, you're you telling us what we can and can't do. Yeah, it's on the, on the humour scale. But then the cynical viewpoint stake is that some of these websites like the nationalreport.net, I'm on their front page, there's a news article here that they've posted saying additional three, $3 gas tax to take effect January 1st, 2015, which isn't funny, it's just a yeah. lie. And I think they tend to do it, the cynical idea of it anyway, is that they tend to do it um, 
create to hysteria? For, no, no, for clickbait to get people to right, come to their yeah, website. Okay. They've, got, they've got another one here. Facebook labels emergency post about house fire as satire. That again, I could see that's supposed to be satire. But, but the headline isn't all that funny, and I can't imagine the article's going to be that funny. But then if we start controlling websites because they don't quite follow what we think they should follow... Yeah, yeah. ...then we'll get rid of all these clickbait sites. Yeah. Get rid of all tabloid journalism. Yeah. Get rid of, you know, news to a certain extent. Yeah. When you see a 30-second clip for, well, the news at 10, and it's bombs and sirens and... Crazy shit has happened in the world. Make sure you tune in and see all the dead bodies. Mm. Well, that's real. Mm. That's still just saying, come and view it, so we get viewing figures. Yeah. But is, but is that wrong? Should we say, well, you know, where where do you draw the line? Because it's comedy, you can get away with it to a certain extent. Because people go, oh well, it's comedy. It's not important. But the importance of it is undoubted. And where. If you start letting things... It's sort of slippery slope, isn't it? If you start letting this go, then where do we start? We go, well, all, all news articles that are slightly misleading, no, yeah. can't have them. Any misleading titles, no. Yeah, it's very controlling, because one of the... And you see it, like, Reddit's a prime example. There's always things like, oh, misleading title, not quite Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. This is wrong. Little tags. Well, surely... Well, I appreciate the side of it that, you know, well, this isn't quite right. Maybe look at the comments, yeah. see this. You're taking away me finding that out myself yeah and well I can see yeah that is it does have some purpose so you aren't misled but you also can't basically just make the internet what you want it to be yeah I agree and I think Facebook have to recognise that uh, I think it was Uncle Ben who said with great power comes great responsibility and Facebook you know Facebook is responsible for driving so many clicks so much traffic to websites they have to recognise that they are that for, for a lot of websites. And by yeah. by taking away the punch of satire for a lot of these websites, they're effectively removing a lot of their traffic. Well, what what do we always see? When we're, <coughs> when we're on TFC page, there's always a little thing at the side that says, promote page, get more likes, get more yeah, clicks, yeah. get more views. On the Facebook page, yeah. And you're basically advertising the exact thing you're trying to stop. Yeah. That's just hypocrisy there. You say, well, if you give us a bit of money, which is what they want, mm. then we can get you more views. Yeah. However, when somebody else does it and it floods our servers and it's on your news feed... Then we'll stop it. Then we'll stop it because, you know, that's bad. Maybe... Are we living in a world where what's defined as good, bad... You know, in di you know not good and bad, it's never black and white, but what doesn't quite tick all the boxes mm. is defined by Facebook. Yeah, yeah. It's not an ideal way to do it. It's a weird... It's a weird... Because you, you won't think about it like that and it's it's interesting that the conversation's gone here because on paper you can just go, oh, sat on a tone, okay, whatever. But when you control what's being seen, what's not being seen, how it's being seen on such a massive global platform, mm. then... You're you're a big player in the game, massively. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. You can you can say, oh, look at Murdoch. He owns however many percent of the American media, and he can put on whatever he wants. Yeah, he can. But there are three hundred million people in America. There's like a billion people on Facebook. Yeah. I mean, not everybody sees the same things, of course. But the tool for good, bad, and indifferent. Mm. I think we spoke about this before. Is 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 huge. Yeah. And so when we start just going, oh, okay, Facebook's doing this now. And you do, you'll see it as an update and go, oh, okay, cool, whatever, fine. Yeah. Why do we all have to install the Messenger app now? You don't really talk, you know, because yeah. it's not really a, a hassle or a bother, but now I'm installing an extra thing. Yeah. And another company's now getting, you know, a billion downloads. What? Well, Where does it end? It's interesting, <coughs> I'll, I'll, just to counter that slightly, I read an interesting thing about the Messenger app, because for people who don't know, now you have to... Yeah, I, I'm using that as an example. I don't know much about it, but I saw a lot of people moan about it with the answer, oh, it's just a Facebook update. It's a bit weird. Well, apparently they're doing it so that people in less well-off countries, with uh, like third-world countries and stuff, with less yeah. money, uh, shittier phones, they can still message people with Facebook by having this stripped-down app. 
They don't have to have the main Facebook app, which okay. takes up a lot of space and stuff like that. So apparently it's to make themselves more marketable to emerging markets, such as third world countries. That's still a business move, whether you want, yeah, it, whether you want to sugarcoat it with, well, people in Gambia yeah. can now message you on Facebook. Yeah. They're still trying to capitalise on third world markets where you have shittier phones. Yeah. But there's nothing too wrong with it. There's nothing. Yeah, no, that, that's business, and that's how business works. Yeah. But they can't come out and go, "Well, we're just trying. To, we're trying to help the little guy." No, yeah, because <laughs> he wants to message you on Facebook too, but his his WAP's just not as good as his yours. WAP, Jesus. Okay, well, that's that's pleasant, but you're still doing it for as a business move. Yeah, I would have thought so. It's marketing. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's we're in a very interesting time with the internet. Because it feels like we're starting to see it transform into a much more regulated thing that's led by a few instead of this big open thing that's led by yeah. everyone. And there's, it feels like it's sort of up in the air which direction it'll go. Maybe it'll go further into the direction of it's led by a few and everyone else has to just accept it. Or maybe it won't. Maybe it'll sort of recede back and maybe we'll learn from all these missteps. Well, the internet is in a positive way. It's such a new resource yeah, as yeah, a whole, and of course, in if you look at you know anything, I can't really think of an example right now. But you know, you know, alcohol, substances, whatever it is, when it's such a massive um, like tool, you yeah. see it over time. It's massively free, and everybody has it. And then we have we have down periods where it becomes very regulated, and then things change and it evolves. And that's sort of the nature of advancement and sort of evolution of technology and that's sort of the excuse for ah oh, don't worry about regulation don't worry about all your sisters sisters lispers sisters FCC uh, and now we're all on Thor or Tor or whatever it's yeah. called and it but I I don't like the argument I'm I'm big on anonymity mm -hmm. on the internet like privacy should be there if you want it to be there and the argument that, well, if you've got nothing to hide, you'll be fine, is sort of a shitty argument. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't... It's always that, well, why would you not want people to be able to trace everything you've ever done ever? Yeah. Well, what are you hiding? Well, it's not It's not the fact that I'm hiding something, but would it's just you... just a principle. Would you want everything out there all the time? Yeah. You need to uphold the principle, because if you're going to live by a principle, you have to do so via actions and not via... Live by the principle, die by the principle. Live by the sword. Die by the sword. But then there's the, for example, Joe Rogan, I listened to his podcast. Who's this? And, uh, he's my boy, Joe Rogan. Oh, I don't know. One love shout out to Joe Rogan. He's probably, uh, he's got this on the car. I would have thought. He, what he usually does is he drives back from work. Yeah. And then because TLDR is so long, he just sits in the driveway and just for hours. Him. For hours. He's the already arrived. The children are saying, Daddy, come in and we play can with see us. with the drive. It's our birthday. <laughs> it's all of our birthday. And he's like, go away! I'm listening to my fave podcast. Like, what oh. is the podcast's name and iTunes information? It's TLDR, the Internet Digest, available on iTunes and Stitcher. Freak bitches. <laughs> but anyway, he always says, when the conversation comes up of privacy and the NSA spying yeah. and all this, you know, soap or whatever, um, the idea of being monitored, he always... He has quite an optimistic view of it, which I find interesting, which is that he thinks that potentially this will just lead to a more open and honest society, which I can sort of see. Or a more repressed society. Possibly. In the fact that everything you used to have an outlet for, you yeah. now fear is monitored at all times. And so you internalise it. It's like... It's not quite the same thing, but I saw an article, so I don't have it up, but it's like something, it was something porn related and how porn, in which porn has been, com not completely free, but like, you know, Pakistan, all these, all these Arabic countries where it's not big at all. Mm. Anywhere that it's been like that and it's been changed, the amount of, you know, sexual assaults and rapes and, you know, sort of... Skyrocket. Up. No, it went down. What? Because, of course, you have an outlet for this. Yeah. And, you know, it's always the sexual abuse or the violence or whatever it is, is always the go-to answer for that. But it's anything. If you 
have an outlet where you can go on and talk about X, Y. You can talk about being a, what is it, fluffy, furry, whatever furry, it is. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, really. If, you, if you're if you a 40-year-old man, you want to dress up as a as a horse and fuck another 40-year-old man dressed up as a horse, mm. that's great. But if you now live under the fear that, okay, well, you know, I've got a job with an accountant and now everybody knows and... It's not everybody knows, but it's a potential. It's on the internet. People have got it saved somewhere. If anything ever happens, it is also the fear that if I ever come in the crossfires of, you know, the government or the authority, they've got my entire internet history to go, well, what about this? What about that? What about this? And all this becomes repressed. And it's not necessarily a bad thing that it becomes repressed. I'm not saying people are going to go out and rapes are going to increase tenfold. (coughs) But a lot of joy people have from, you know, even being somebody completely different. There's nothing wrong with being somebody completely different. Like pretending to be somebody. Yeah. Yeah. If you're having the time of your life pretending to be butter shy 45. Yeah. That, that's great. If that makes you get through your nine to five. Yeah. Perfectly fine and happy and dandy and you're having coffee in the morning and everyone's, oh, how are you, Steve? I'm great. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But then if you take that away... People yeah, but are you become re- more repressed and miserable. But you're thinking of it as secrets coming out in a world where we're not used to secrets coming out. But if you imagine, it's not even secrets. It's just the fear of somebody else knows. Yeah, yeah. But if you imagine like hundred or two hundred years down the line, where everyone just already knows everything about each other, then that will no longer be a problem. No longer be an issue. Cause, do you want every? Do you want people to know everything about you? Well, no, because I'm so used to having private parts of my life. But if I grew up in a world where that just wasn't the case, I probably would wouldn't you, care. I know, and it's you can't really be subjective, um, objective, and answer that question. But would you want that? I wouldn't want that. I don't know. I mean, if I'd grown into it and it had always been the case for me, then and that's it, the thing it, it'd probably if you be a live, good thing because you're a product of your environment and if you live in that then that's all you know and that's great and that's brilliant but <coughs> that's not well, it could ever going to be the case well it could be though because you know you, you imagine the first thing you imagine is that oh well who's going to know all these secrets the government but not necessarily if the method that they use to find out secrets is something as open as the internet then it'll just be everyone monitoring everyone else or not monitoring but just no one having secrets, not the government, not the people, nobody. And having secrets can be a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing. It can hinder you. It can, you know, you can feel as though you're not supposed to talk about certain things. Yeah. You can feel scared so, of talking about certain things. But that's that's an argument of, does the good outweigh the bad? But it, what would be the bad in that in that case? That everybody knows everything about everybody else. But yeah, but let's let's imagine this society where it's always been the case, essentially, and everyone just does know everything about everybody else, just because. What would. What would be so bad about that? Well, societies and structures would, would change completely, and. In a, like an ideology, great, it would be lovely, and, and you'd go and you'd sit around with people who are similar minded, and how many times, does somebody reveal an opinion or a belief or. Something that, like, takes you aback a bit and you're like, oh, that's fucking dreadful. Not dreadful as such, but, oh, that's surprising. If I can pick out all the people that I completely disagree with on everything Mm -hmm. or I find their views reprehensible... Yeah. Then you're just going to cull people immediately, surely. And you're going to live in little happy communes where you surround yourself with people who are like, oh, yeah, I believe this. Oh, I'm a supporter of X. I'm a supporter of y. of Y. I'm not saying we're all going to be living in hippie communes, but say the world is exactly as it is, but we all know what's going on. Hmm. Then, you know, things like politics aren't going to exist debate-wise, because, well, we'll all go over here. Yeah, but maybe it all... There is a chance that it could give us all this sense of humility, because we all know that Oh yeah, Graham, who works in accounting, he yeah. just always has rape fantasies like every night. Yeah. And it's just, and so does uh, Bill, and so does Susan, so does Marianne, and it's just a you know fairly normal thing for some people. Fair enough, you know. Yeah. You, all, you all know that I have an eel fetish. Yeah. To use one of my personal, I just love eels. I don't know why. Yeah. But like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, 
it'd, yeah. it'd feel more normal and acceptable to... Like every, it'd, it'd be more understood that everyone has a dark side and we wouldn't yeah, be scared if, about having a dark side. If anymore. secrets weren't secrets, if secrets didn't exist, yeah. then secrets wouldn't exist. And so the feelings that come along with having secrets or knowing secrets or feeling as if this is a piece of information you should keep a secret wouldn't exist. Yeah. And so those negatives wouldn't exist. Mm. But is it feasible to think it ever won't? Is it feasible to go... I mean, it's, it's a very long-winded to say, you know, let them see everything on the internet too, living in a society like this. But hypothetically, yeah. if everything's out on the table yeah. and has been, you know, for as long as you know in the whole society that you know, then there is no secret and there is nothing there. But the world isn't just going to live in, in happy, good sides. No, not necessarily. What? People might be more mentally healthy, though. Because a great amount of honesty less anxiety less feeling of isolation more feeling of community connectedness yeah there's but these are all just sort of what what if scenarios you can say (coughs) well you know what if people felt worse Mm, yeah it's true and while it's nice to sit down and say well you know we'll all talk openly and taboos that we have now won't be taboos and people who have you know severe you know mental issues or desires for this that and the other can seek the help they need because they'll be open and honest and great. It's, you know, judgment's still going to exist. Yeah. You know, human instinct and nature is still going to exist, like pack mentality. Yeah. Divide and conquer. Mm. And there's still going to be people who use whatever it is as a tool to gain power. And it might, again, it might be me just taking the cynical devil's advocate point of view, but if secrets don't exist I feel like judgement and the concept of power and manipulation will still exist and thus will only create a concept that might not be secrets as we know them but a a sort of hidden aspect regardless eventually it might be immediately it might be 100 years down the line but people are still gonna group people here think okay well I can manipulate you because of this and that and I can step on you to get to here and then people will realise this and want to keep it to themselves yeah and also if we if we ever do get to that um, society where there's no such thing as a secret really then you have like you might have some random guy who's figured out how to actually keep a secret yeah. And he'll have such an upper hand because no one will even be familiar with the concept. Like the invention of lying. I was just thinking of that. Yeah, yeah, the Ricky Face movie. Which could have been so good. It could have been brilliant. Really but... bad? Well, it wasn't really bad. Oh. He just turned it right at the end into this allegory about how the Bible doesn't even reel yeah. and atheism it was deal a with bit... it. Ah, uh, yeah. Could have been good. Could it was alright. Really it good. was alright. Yeah, it was watchable. But it could have been really good. I also didn't understand how in that film the the the, the idea of that film the premise was like we live in a world where people don't lie people just don't know what lying is yeah and then what is it he he introduces the I can't remember what happens but something happens where he introduces the concept of lying yeah oh no I know what it they, they live in a world where everyone where no one lies but the way that manifests itself is that everybody tells the truth compulsively. Yeah. And that's the problem that I had with that film, is that yeah. ju- a world where people don't lie, like, what about lying by omission? What about just not yeah. bothering to say something? Like, people just blurt out, oh, I don't like you. You are ugly. Yeah. 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 That's, that's a sort of cop-out argument. And why you could argue, well, what defines a secret, blah, 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 blah. I don't think that's a secret. That's just context. Yeah. In the fact that you could ask me, oh... Do I, what do I look like? Do yeah. I look fat in these jeans? And I, I'm not going to say yes, because I'm not a bad person. And then if I could just read your mind, yeah, that might lead people to be insecure. But then it might be, it might not, it might lead people to be more secure because they realise that everybody is insecure. It might make people feel... A bit better. I don't know, we can, we can go around in circles about this for days, but... But that's the invention no, no. of lying. Go and see it in your local multiplex. That's our review. Uh, 9.0 out of 10.0. But, but no, it is, it is an interesting one. And it's a, it's, it is a nice idea. 
to go, well, you know, if everything's out in the open, then society will, to a certain extent, become more open and honest. Yeah. But it's well, possibly whether naive. Whether that's the case yeah. or not, I don't know. I feel like it is a little bit naive. There we go, Joe Rogan called out for being naive. Naive. Yeah. I'll fight you. No, You'll fight Joe Rogan? I'd fight, I'd lose. I'd fight him. Yeah. If he put on an event and said, I want me and you main event three rounds... You've, pro- you've probably I'd say yes. I'd lose, but I'd say yes. But you've probably gone further than he has in the world of martial arts, and when you were a lot younger. Yeah. So there you go. Potentially. So you you've already won. I wonder what he was doing when he was twenty. Uh, Stand up comedy, I think, or I think he might have started when he was twenty one. Well, twenty one teach... four days. I'll get a uh, yeah, teach yeah. martial arts. Yeah. What did he teach? He taught like, Back and down, kung fu. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Martial arts. Yeah, he won the, yeah, the, yeah. the US. He won the US. Championships two years in a row, I think. When? When he was like young. A how old are he? Forty something. So I'd say like late eighties, mid eighties, mid to late eighties. That's interesting. I could probably do that though. So yeah. Just saying. That's Facebook satire. Yeah. So I didn't know that. I honestly had no idea of that. Well, I completely missed that. Anyway, we're it's in twenty minutes. We'll have been going for two hours. So do you want to bring up something new? Well, Unless I, you have anything else to say about satire attack. No, it's an interesting... I'm, I'm glad we had that conversation. I honestly didn't know anything about it. Yeah. It was nice to um, have a chat about it. Yeah, yeah. I've got a lot of stories that are quite quite short. OK, go on. So I'll just bring them up. Do you want piracy, dead animals, environment, uh, capital punishment? What's the best, do you think? They're all equally brilliant. How about piracy? Piracy. Couple of piracy stories I noticed this week. Go on. Uh, Thirty-three months, a man got in prison. Right. For Fast and the Furious Six. Have you ever seen Fast and the Furious series? Yeah, I've seen uh, a few, but I've not seen number six. Did number six have Paul Walker in it, or? Yeah, they all have Paul Walker in, even the one that's not yet come out. Oh right, okay. Uh, Paul Walker in The Rock. Uh, it was meant to be quite good. I've not seen it, mm-hmm. but a man did download it seven hundred and seventy nine thousand times. <laughs> One guy did. Yeah, and like distributed it, and was just obviously <laughs> caught because he just downloaded it to the same IP address. Wait, he downloaded it a hundred thousand times. Why not just download it once and make hundred thousand copies? And he uh, he sold it on. He made himself a lot of money. Well, I don't understand. I don't understand this. He downloaded this film. No, he he uploaded the film. All oh, right. And he didn't change his IP address ever. Mm. And so it all came from him. It wasn't on like Pirate Bay where it's all seeded. Yeah. And so it came from all over the world. It came. So from people were downloading it from his computer from him and times. his big servers. I imagine yeah. seven, like you know, nearly eight hundred thousand times. Oh, eight hundred thousand times. And people just went, well, that's obviously you. And he went to jail for 33 months. Now, what? this was a thing I wanted to sort of, you know, not, I didn't really want to bring it up, but 33 months is nearly three years in yeah, prison. in jail. Well, in... In prison. Prison, uh, yeah. You know, taxpayer, you know, whatever you want to argue about. That's three years in prison for basically just downloading a film. And now, obviously, yeah, it is illegal, etc. It costs the filmmakers apparently £2.3 million. Pounds. Does it? No. I, di- I really disagree with that. Potentially, that's what it says. You know, in what... If all those people went and bought it, is basically that argument. Yeah. But that's obviously bullshit. But 33 months for this seems, like, massively pointless. I don't get what this... Does or it's prove? a deterrent, isn't it? It's saying like if you do this, you'll spend three years in prison potentially, which is I don't know. I I, I don't I don't like all of this because it's like it's just so it's such a transparent um, piece of evidence that like this industry, this commercial industry, has basically the power of the state behind it because. I mean, you could argue that that's not the case because it's just, you know, whatever, copyright law and so on. But copyright but they, law wouldn't exist. If not for what? If not for an industry's involvement in, in the state. 
Yeah, yeah, I suppose so. But I suppose that comes back because, you know, indus- industries, stars, etc., they pay taxes, whatever, and okay, I can see how it all links together. But you're basically putting the law and the government and the nation in charge of punishing those who have not harmed the nation or gone against its judicial systems or... Yeah, but not harmed, harmed anyone. ...harmed big business. Just, it's, it's not even harming big, big, big business, it's just well, you know, refusing even, to do business. Even in their own terms of it lost them £2.3 million. Pounds. It didn't no. lose me £2.3 million. Pounds. It didn't lose the nation £2.3 no. million. Pounds. It, it affected, this particular it affected business. us, nobody. Yeah. It, it cost Universal Pictures yeah. £2.3 million quid. And I'm not saying that Universal Pictures should just go, oh, well, if you want to just do whatever you want with our films and our music and chop it and make things of your own, whatever. Because that's obviously counterintuitive. But why should the government of, you know, any nation hmm. be dealing out punishments for big business or business at all? If I go and stand outside McDonald's with a food truck and take away 20% of their business... Yeah. Yeah, you should, you should be allowed to do that. Yeah. I mean, this is breaking a law. Yes... It is a law. You can't say it's not a law, but it's only a law to secure big business. Yeah. Like if I went to court and said, like, let's say we put out TLDR for a price. Let's say we said 69p per episode or whatever. And if I came up to, um, if I took it to court and said, look, someone's downloaded an episode of our podcast illegally. Yeah. They'd just tell me to piss off. They wouldn't take that case. Yeah, they'd have absolutely no interest yeah. in taking that case whatsoever. But Universal Pictures, I suppose it's different because the amount of money is greater and so on. But well, it's, sc- it's scale, isn't it? Yeah, and nobody is going to be arrested for downloading the you know top film on Pirate Bay or whatever <coughs> because that's not how it works. This is just an isolated case. But I feel like it's completely pointless. I feel as well, the number of, what was it, 2.5 million or whatever? 2.3 million potential cost. Yeah, that is pulled out of their arse. No one's lost 2.3 million. Nobody's lost that money. That money hasn't been lost. Yeah, it's just never existed. Yeah, you could even argue that, and I think the argument is much stronger, that piracy has boosted all of the industries that it's affected. Not necessarily all of the industries, like a few of them maybe not, but TV, for example... One of the uh, Game of Thrones producers yeah. outright came out and said, someone's doing a shooting at yeah. I can hear that. Someone, came, someone said, um, one of the Game of Thrones producers says that the success of the show is thanks to almost exclusively piracy, people pirating it. Yeah. And also we were talking, I think, last episode or maybe the episode before about the uh, highest grossing films ever. Yeah. And we noticed that they were all from, not all, but almost years. all of the top ten were from the last ten years. Yeah. And what happened in the last ten years? Piracy got huge. So I know that correlation isn't causation and all of that, but the movie industry is doing better than it ever has done. And this is just a few years after the movie industry said, look, we're about to die if you don't stop pirating. People didn't stop pirating. People pirated more. And the movie industry is doing really well. Because of it, I don't know, but... Well, we, we brought it up about films the other day the other day the other episode yeah. the fact that I wouldn't have seen any of the films wouldn't have had any of the interest yeah, yeah it's not yeah. films it's music it's comedy mm. it's to, like I'm a big wrestling fan of things I can't be in America to see a tiny independent show in you know Delaware yeah but it's uploaded <laughs> online I'm not going to risk spending $16 to buy the DVD and wait three weeks and avoid internet spoilers wait for them to send it all the way over here. Yeah. I'm more likely to download it if I think it's great and love it. Then you're more invested in the product and down the line you're more likely to put eyes to it, talk about it. Yeah, buy merchandise, buy other things. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not even purchasing. Like, it's the whole argument that you... you it's engagement. See, it? Yeah, it's engagement. And if you... Word of mouth, social media. It's, mm. the, it's the whole go and tell a friend yeah, argument. Yeah. If I see something brilliant, if I see a crazy great film, I'll, I'll probably be like, oh, Phil, have you seen this film? Yeah, exactly, yeah. And then maybe and, I'll see it in the cinema. And, you know, it, it's not always as simple as that, obviously, it can, but it can happen eight dominoes down the line, but it still happens. Yeah. You've got to have that first flick, and wouldn't you rather have that first flick than no flick at all? Yeah. 
Definitely. I completely, that's a that's a great point. The point that people will often tell their friends about this movie. Oh, I've seen a great movie. I've seen a great TV series. If you watch this, if you've seen this, yeah, which is something that happens a lot these days. Like, Absolutely, because because everyone is so connected. Yeah, and, and because these things are so available. So if I say to five different people, "Have you watched Game of Thrones?" One of them is going to watch it on TV. Maybe four of them will pirate it, but one of them is going to watch it on TV. Yeah. If I say to five different people. Have you seen the great Jesse Eisenberg, Woody Allen, Dave Franco classic? Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Woody Allen didn't make an appearance. Oh, yeah, now yeah. you see me. Also with Michael Caine and uh, Morgan Freeman. You know, five of them might download it, one of them might go and see it in the cinema. There's my ticket. There's the £4.50 that I wouldn't And it's spend. even bigger right numbers now. than that. I can... It doesn't matter how many followers, Instagram, whatever, Twitter, I can tweet at four in the morning... Oh, just watch, you know, Sin City. Yeah. It's great. Mm. Oh, I can scroll through the newsfeed, someone recommends it and see it. And it's opening doors to something to literally thousands of yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. And I, I honestly don't see the problem with that. I understand at a certain level when you're looking at like people who have spent all their money to basically put out this album mm. and I'm just downloading it. But that's very, very, very grassroots. Yeah. I feel if you have a record contract and you're able to just put out an album, yeah. while you'd probably like me to to buy it so you get more immediate cash, mm. wouldn't you prefer that you have more eyes on your product? Yeah, yeah. More eyes on your music, your film, whatever yeah. it is. And at the time... You've built an audience that way. And there are people out there who are very successful but are only successful... In their, they're not successful in their own world, in their own mind. Yeah. To a certain extent, like Scroobius Pip is a good example. He's a. I was just thinking about Scroobius Pip. He's a he's a big proponent of you know buy it, you yeah. know, Instagrammy pictures and you know whatever this and that. He doesn't like it when people tell him that they've pirated his. Yeah, and I saw it on things. Facebook the other day. Um, a wrestler was just like, oh, he got a message from a fan, blah blah blah. blah. You're really great. Just downloading this, and he's like, downloading, blah, you're a thief. And um, well, yes. And these people aren't as rich. Like, Scroobius Pitt is a sort of hip hop type guy. And his world is music stars and rich people. And, you know, he's not fucking Jay-Z, but he is in his his game, basically. He's in that same... He's in that arena. world, to a certain extent. Yeah. Yeah, it may, not necessarily a peer, but... Yeah, but it's, this, it's the same plateau. And so, he's got more money than I'll probably ever have. Yeah. And he's probably very comfortable doing this forever at exactly the same rate he's doing it. Yeah. But he's not as big as he feels he could be. Mm. But you're not you're not struggling. I'm not stealing from you. Yeah. I also feel as though if you're making a money in a way that doesn't make sense anymore, you've just got to find a new way to make money. We're not going to accommodate you. Like, why should why should the the people of the world, you know, the yeah. citizens, why should people accommodate you're giving people who, who are just doing something that doesn't make sense anymore people who are doing who are trying to profit in a way that just isn't viable anymore like I'm sorry that it isn't viable anymore I understand that you're, you've been put out of work or whatever but adapt you know that, that person should adapt not the thousands of other people there's a reason that people do big business in live events Album yeah, yeah, sales, yeah, yeah. I can't remember who was talking about it, but I heard somebody talking about it, that album sales aren't really as significant as they once no. were. You could almost think now as of albums as being adverts for live shows. You could think of it that way. Because you look at somebody like, you know, a Beyonce, a Jay-Z, they're top of their game, biggest people in the world in their, you know, field. But their album numbers aren't anywhere as big as somebody in, like, the 90s or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. But they're live events the arenas they can play yeah, they're huge now like I don't know if you look at somebody like I don't know a, a Snoop Dogg say mm. he can his most profitable album I don't know this I'm just talking out my ass but I assume was one of his earlier sort of hip hop albums yeah. from like the 90s when it was huge yeah. probably made a, a healthy amount of money there yeah. but he makes millions a year touring yeah. And doing those hits and doing his new songs, doing whatever. Because and doing all can, sorts of things. Snoop Dogg is a workforce. He's because he great. can... These people can now capitalise on all this attention. Yeah. And 
put their product on a bigger level, on a bigger scale, and make more money down the line. Yeah. It's a scale like I feel huge pop stars or huge movie stars never really complain about piracy because they're very, very comfortable where they are and they look one step ahead. Yeah. They see that down the line, this is a big cash cow. Yeah, yeah. Because if I give one person a flyer to my event, yeah, he might come and get 10 people, I might get $10 on the door, but then if I'm throwing them around, anyone can have one, whoever whoever wants one can have one, then there's so many more eyes to where it is. Yeah. That live event, Whatever, if you, it's not even a live event. Whatever you're doing down the line, you're going to have more eyes on you than you would if piracy didn't exist. Yeah, I agree, definitely. I mean, yeah, I think piracy is probably really a good thing because right now it's it's hurting uh, certain industries, potentially, or it's at least potentially hurting certain creators and uh, products and so on. But that's, if I'm, I'm sure that if you pull back and look at the bigger picture, yeah, if, if you were to look at, oh, let's have a look at industry from 1900 to 2200, you'd see the the graph going like down a little bit, yeah. just as piracy starts and then massively up, massively. Up. And I don't, I think it's a mistake to just say our oh, piracy is making things bad right now, so we should end it because, like you say, it's has a great effect down the line, and it's even having a great effect now. It's, it's sort of not being able to see the forest for the trees. Yeah. And I can understand being in the position, especially as a smaller, you know, or independent, whatever you are, putting a lot of time and a lot of work and probably a lot of money or, you know, risk, I suppose, to a certain extent, in putting a product out there. Yeah. And so at the time, this is like your most important thing you've ever done. Yeah. You feel like the value of this to you personally is almost immeasurable. Yeah. And so people just say, oh, well, I'll have that. Yeah. Seems like you're being sort of kicked in the teeth yeah. and not really getting your dues. But you don't realise that you the don't person who just that, took yeah. it is now a potential, someone you can sell something to at some point. And people, it's, you know, it's nature. If you offer me something for a pound or you offer me something for free, I'm going to take the thing that's free. Yeah. I'm all, if, is there a free sample? I'm going to take it. I'm yeah. going to take it. And it's just simple marketing. Yeah. And it's, you know, pe- people are doing it to almost prevent piracy. You see artists putting out albums or songs from albums on your SoundCloud. So have a free download, yeah, have a yeah. free this. Some even put them on uh, the Pirate Bay and BitTorrent and stuff like that. Yeah, some people do. And you often see them as like the adverts on the yeah, yeah. page. What I've heard, don't go on the website. No, I, I find piracy to be detestable and immoral. Disgusting. Yeah. But even the argument that piracy is completely illegal. Yeah. I feel that prison sentences yeah uh, it's just a case of bad judicial law I it, feel like it, it's completely foolish we you have news stories all the time of overcrowded prisons it costs X yeah. amount to keep somebody in prison a year well then why why are we filling them up with petty crimes and it's sort it's one of the big arguments for the the war on drugs yeah, yeah throwing yeah, yeah. people in you're filling prisons with people who don't need to be in prison you're making prisoners making criminals rather than catching criminals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the whole pedo baiting thing. Yeah. You're not really catching paedophiles. You're just setting a trap for paedophiles and then going, ah, oh, you're a paedophile now. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure. That's a, that's another conversation. Yeah, that's, that's a that's big a huge conversation. huge conversation, a but... Interesting analogy. But, I mean, it's the... It's the whole, I'm not catching somebody who's t- committing a crime. I'm making a crime and making... I'm putting a big net in his path yeah, and yeah, just exactly. scooping up everybody who falls in it yeah it's like if you declare walking illegal then you'll fill the prisons and if yeah, you need exactly. to fill the prisons then do that yeah it doesn't it doesn't benefit at all slightly funnier piracy story go on uh, North Korea what about it they're crazy Boy. a couple of them have been on the internet a couple just one or two I think like 0.5% of the population has the internet but they um They've been downloading quite a lot. What have they been downloading in North Korea? Well, they've been downloading a lot of um, violent American computer games. Don't know why they have to be violent. Yeah, why not download uh, My Little Pony Football Friendship Manager. Manage, Football Manager 2014. Goat Simulator 2014. Goat Simulator 2014. Euro Truck Simulator Euro 2. Euro Truck Simulator. But, you know, they're downloading uh, a lot of games. They're also downloading 
a lot of porn, obviously, because are they? Everyone, if you live in a repressed society, you're interested in what's going on in people's pussies elsewhere. Yeah, and uh, asses, assholes. And they're also downloading Top Gear. Top Gear. Top Gear. Big Why? fans of Top Gear. That's weird. Uh, what do you think the draw is? Do you know? And uh, number number two mm. is Doctor Who. Is this like a top ten or something? No, it's like the like two biggest. So British TV then. Come on. Potentially. I don't know if Excellent. it's like... Because I imagine the 0.5% of people that have the internet are reasonably well-off diplomats or... Yeah. You know, travellers. A lot of them will be politicians. Whatever it is. Like but still, you're towing the party line mm. and you're downloading, you know, Far Cry 3. Meant to be a great game. I've not played it. The pornography downloaded featured both Japanese and American titles. Like? Including the likes of Sex and Zen, Extreme Ecstasy... Pre- what? Prelude to an Audrey and student sex parties. Student sex parties isn't too bad. Sex and Zen uh, didn't work for me, but the lady enjoyed it. One of the most popular films, uh, 1985, Arnold Schwarzenegger Commando. <laughs> what? Yeah, I don't know. Such a strange selection. But hang on though, how many people is 0.5 people? Not point five. I'm, it's not a lot. It's like hundred thousand or something. Hundred thousand. I've pulled so, up my ass. I don't know if it's hundred thousand. It's probably not. It's probably like on. ten thousand. Let's find out what is the population of North Korea. I'm going to guess five million. Twenty-four point seven six <laughs> million. Uh, and zero point five percent of twenty-four point seven six million. Ten hundred thousand people. Yeah, 123,800 people. So, the majority... The, for, for something to be the most downloaded film... It won't be a lot, yeah. It's, it might just be like 20 people. Oh, let's all download this and, you know. Yeah, it's, it's probably not a huge amount. And so, you look at that and go, why is it Commando? People probably just talked about Commando and go, it's quite good, download it and watch it. But, it's still funny. That's weird. Oh, I shouldn't have lied down and given myself a heartburn. Oh, no, Johnson Water. I'm alright. I bought uh, some antacid tablets from Asda. Yeah. Four of these little rolls of 20 of them for only like £1.50 or something like that. That's so, not bad. Uh, what else have you got apart from piracy? We've done piracy. I think we've, we've basically sorted out piracy. Piracy is out of the way. Pope yeah. news is out of the way. We've uh, sorted out the Pope. I've got the environment. I've got... That doesn't need sorting. Animals. Yeah. Uh, capital punishment. It's all a bit... It's all a bit... Big. Which is the best one? Wow. They're all a bit terrible. Capital punishment is really just a debate about capital punishment because everyone seems to be killing everybody at the minute. Well, I've got one uh, left that's a bit lighter that we could talk hit about. Me, hit me, hit me, hit me. This is the... Um, apparently, on the International Space Station, or as I call it, the ISS, yeah. where home is, um, they found sea plankton on the outside of the International Space Station. How? Uh, well, apparently, a lot of sea plankton was sort of lifted up in updrafts and so on, and some of it just gets into space, which they didn't know before, and it lives on the outside of the ISS. Apparently, it survives. I'm not sure how it survives. What, yeah, what does it survive on? Because I haven't really read the article. Um, I'm going to read out this quote here. I'm going to go out, go, out, go out on a limb. Yeah. This might be shit. This isn't a quote, actually. This is just an excerpt from an article. Head of the Russian ISS orbital mission, Vladimir Solovyev. 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 Or Vlad, because we're homies. Blast off site, Kazakhstan. No, I've read a a line from a different paragraph. Vladimir Solovyev says that the results of the experiment are absolutely unique. He said that the marine microorganisms, microorganisms were not native to blast off site, Kazakhstan and may have been uplifted to the station at an altitude of 420 kilometres. Plankton in these stages of development could be found on the surface of the oceans, he said. This is not typical of Balkonor in Kazakhstan. It means that there are some uplifting air currents which reach the station and settle on its surface. So he's saying uh, the sea plankton probably will have arrived onto the space station after it got into orbit. Uh, so but I'm not been, sure how they live. How does it sustain life? Is it here something to do with heat or moisture? Um, 
Some organisms can live on the surface of the International Space Station for years amid factors of a spaceflight such as zero gravity, temperature conditions and hard cosmic radiation. Several surveys prove that these organisms can even develop. But it doesn't say how they... I suppose maybe they don't know how they've lived. But it just says that this finding confirms that they can live. And how um, how high is this space station into orbit? I think it's in low Earth orbit. 420 kilometres. Oh, yeah. Said that in the article. Blaze it. Blaze it. Yeah. Which is in the part of space that's black, but it's still technically in Earth's orbit. Um... I think that if they stopped the engines, I think it'd just fall to Earth. But it's still high enough up, high enough up that it's in space. We couldn't survive there, could we? No, no. I mean, you'd have to wear a spacesuit to like walk on the outside of the ISS, I believe. So that's quite fascinating that life can be sustained in space, where we cannot be sustained. Yeah. There's um. Have you ever heard of tardigrades? No, I believe they're called tardigrades. Let me just Google that to make sure. Tardigrades. Um, they're also known as water bears or moss piglets. They are a water-dwelling, segmented uh, micro-animal with eight legs. And they're tiny. I can't find out how big they are. But they can survive in space. Oh, they're 0 0.5 millimetres long when fully grown. Wow, that's so they're tiny. half a millimetre. They're tiny. Um, every image of them is taken with a microscope, you know, there is more. And they can, uh, they're can they famous for being able to survive in really extreme environments. Like really, really cold, really, really hot. And just in deep space, they can survive, yeah. apparently. So well, there are all sorts of animals. Well, there's a lot of life, even on Earth, that survives the ridiculous. Like those at the very, very bottom of the sea. Deep that sea. That survive creatures, yeah. on, like, the, the heat, the light and the heat from... Vents. Is that yeah. It? Yeah. I mean, it's fast. It is fascinating. Yeah, but it's it's something I I know so little about. I mean, it's fascinating, even in the sense that you can imagine. You you can like have have this science fiction imagination where maybe there's a planet somewhere where there's animals that live in the ocean that are smaller and lighter than plankton. Yeah, the gravity on that planet is less strong, and the winds are more fierce. So, on that planet, what's to say that some of their alien plankton, whatever it might be, yeah. is also taken up in space, and then that might disperse into the universe and land on other planets and so on. Maybe that, maybe it could hibernate indefinitely. There's so, take on so many sort of unanswered questions. Yeah, it could, that could be like a way that life is seeded onto other planets. I mean, maybe not, I don't know. It seems something that over the past, you know, five to ten years, we've really realised that other planets, space, bottom of the sea, you know, top of mountains, life can be found in places you just... You almost Jeff Goldblum did it there. Do you remember the Jeff Goldblum um, quote from Jurassic Park? No. Life seen Jurassic Park uh, finds a way. Do you not remember that? No, I don't. Life uh, finds a way. No. I've not seen it. I've not, probably not seen it since... Since it came out. 94. 2000, maybe? 2000. Really? Yeah. Such a good film. Someone bought it for me. So on, good. On a VHS tape. I remember watching it at like Christmas. Oh man, watch that. It is, it is. ASAP. I remember enjoying it. It's such a good film. New one, soon. Jurassic World with Chris Pratt. Yeah. Who did the Ice Bucket Challenge this week? Saw it on Reddit. He did, yeah. He, um... Callback. Drank some Smirnoff Ice and some Blue Ice Vodka. Something. Did he? I didn't actually watch it. Oh I yeah. saw the link. <laughs> and then someone poured loads of ice on it. So I always know how it ends. Oh, you were, you were wrong. You were dead wrong, my friend. I'm always like, oh, I'm probably just going to throw water in. No, it was quite funny. It was comedic. Um, but yeah, life... Uh, finds a way. Finds a way. And the fact that it finds a way probably indicates that it's, fi it's found a way in places we consider it probably hasn't. Yeah. Mars is a prime example. Yeah. We didn't think there was anything on Mars. There is. Is there? Yeah, I think oh, so. Oh, it's a lot of microorganisms. Yeah. I need to look into this. I don't want to be under red on Mars. The moon. Uh, all, you know, all these places. It's fa it is really fascinating. Um, Space. The final frontier. The final frontier. The weather to... I don't know the rest of the Shakespeare quote, but 
It was. It started off in space. The front front there, didn't it? Alas, Yor- Vorik, Yorick, Yorick, Horatio, Horatio. Yeah, I knew him. Space. The final frontier. frontier. Yeah, that was it. That yeah. was it. I've got it. Phew. Uh, on January twenty fourth, twenty fourteen, NASA reported that current studies on the planet Mars by Curiosity and Opportunity will now be searching for evidence of ancient life, including a biosphere based on autotrophic, chemotrophic, and or <coughs> or microorganisms. As well as ancient water, including fluvio lacustrine environments. Yeah, I think it was a case that there might not be life there currently. But there might have been. But there has been at some point. And well, there's lakes and shit. And... I mean, if you think of... If you zoom all the way out and look at the way the universe works, first of all, you see this smattering of galaxies. Yeah. And all galaxies look pretty similar. And then you zoom in and all of them have stars. And all of these stars have planets orbiting them. All of these mm. planets have either water or gas or rocks or whatever... There are all these patterns, and to say that five patterning stops, yeah, five to say that patterns don't happen anymore after a certain point is ridiculous. So, yeah. in the same sense that you can guarantee that you travel a million light years in that direction, you're probably going to find a star with planets orbiting it. Yeah, you can also probably guarantee that there's a life there. Yeah, life. Well, maybe you can't guarantee there's life there, but life seems to be... This seems to be you a universe that produces life. Yeah. That life in some form... Just happens in the universe. Yeah. Because it clearly it does. We aren't the centre of the universe. No. It comes back to well, that... <laughs> remember that Alan Watts... Who's that? I don't know who that is. Where he's talking about the ink that's splattered. Yeah. And we're literally over here. We're, we're not smack bang right in right the middle. Edge. Yeah, and he was talking about how you know it's all part of the same thing, and we're all one. Yeah. And it's he was all saying that if you think of the Big Bang, you feel as though you're no longer the Big Bang, but in reality you are. You are. You're right on the edge. But it's that same argument that it is all, all what we aren't in the middle. Things don't. We're over here. Things are going to be all the way over here. We're not the most important thing. Yeah. That's well, difficult we are the most because thing, because I but... feel I feel as though we are in the centre of the observable universe. Literally. In our observable universe, yeah. But it's our observable universe. Yeah, but our observable universe is just the, the only way that you can define the centre of the universe is by an observer. So it's arbitrary to say that I'm on the edge. Yeah. Based on that person, millions of light years over there, because he's in the centre of his one. Then you've you've just defined another one where there is someone at the centre, yeah. and that someone is yeah, in the centre. There's no such thing as the objective universe. People people like to imagine there is, like scientists, for the sake of ease and so on. But it actually doesn't exist. But anyway, because that's another huge conversation for another time probably, um, I will conclude by saying this is a universe that produces life, and so there's probably life on other planets. What about internets? Probably internets on other planets. Possibly. That's... Yeah. Think about it, guys. Yeah. Woof. Good Never point. Know. Good point, Phil. Wow. Well, you know... You know what I'm saying? Anything's possible. I come up with deep thoughts like this all the time. <coughs> There's, it's that whole argument that... If, you know, not parallel universes, but... Of outside our realm of knowledge. Yeah. You, you, in, in our minds... Not in our minds, as far as we know... Mm. We know nothing, yeah. so who can say what is there and what isn't there? So, who can are you s- saying like you don't know what you don't know? Yeah. So, how can you comment on it? Like, there could be anything there. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I'm not saying that you can't com- comment on it, but I'm saying that you can't rule anything out. Yeah, 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 yeah. And also, if we if you live in an infinite universe, which by all probability we do... Touch wood. <laughs> oh, hello. In order to for in order for there to be infinity, um, everything that's possible must be a part of it. Again, this is a huge concept, but just look into it. Just look like into infinity. Digging. Yeah, look. yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to smash try and eyes. explain it badly, but like Google it. Just Google yeah. infinity or something, because you know, it's, eight on its, side. it's the whole thing of the monkeys with typewriters. If you give infinite monkeys infinite, infinite typewriters type over an infinite amount of time, they'll Type the complete works of Shakespeare because they'll necessarily <sighs> have to. <laughs> it's bullshit, isn't it? It's bullshit, stupid. Yeah. yeah. 
How would they get the words right in the right order? They can't spell monkeys, so... Doesn't make sense. Uh, idiot. Shit argument. But it's basically saying that if you have a random string of numbers, and that random string of... Not necessarily numbers, but uh, letters. If you, have a rand- if you have a random string of numbers that's infinite, mm. it will contain every possible combination of numbers. an infinite amount of times yeah. over. So not only will it contain the transcript of this conversation just by happenstance, but it will contain it infinite times. Yeah. It will contain everything else infinite times. It'll because contain... it is infinite. Yeah. All encompassing. <clears throat> Did well there. Thank you. We did a good job. I might have a glass of water just because I need to rehydrate after such a draining intellectual conversation. Yeah. Oh. Why don't you uh, piss in your own mouth? Hello. Then you're saving time because then you're recycling water. Bear grills. I'm quite big on recycling. I've been trying to drink uh, a gallon of water a day. Really? Yeah. A gallon of water a day? Yeah. Get yourself a water bottle because I have like one of those. I have an app. So <laughs> oh, you've got an app. That's yeah. safe. Yeah, you're covered. Cool. Yeah, no, it's good. Do you want to talk about anything else? Mine are all a bit heavy and will probably be spoken about for hours and hours on end. Well, we've been going for two hours and 15 minutes. Wow. So it's up to you. I mean, I'm going to defer to you. Just basically because making a decision is effort. So you can do it. Would you all just sack it off? The listeners don't deserve any more. No, they've really taken, taken, taken and not given anything. They've not given so. us anything. And it's yeah. a little bit embarrassing for them. Yeah. Remember to donate through our PayPal. Which yes. is donate to tldr.org. TLDR. No, not dot .com forward slash at paypal.com. Yeah. T- type out forward slash though the whole thing. forward slash coupons forward slash coupon offers offers forward slash redeem redeem yeah. dot xpf yeah. thanks for uh, listen listening yeah uh, um, see you uh, next time on TLDRV Internet Digest. Would you like to uh, give a big shout out to uh, all those people who downloaded the podcast and all the people who streamed it online via a service such as uh, YouTube, Stitcher, uh, iTunes? Double twist. The inbuilt media player on the site, tscpodcast.com. Thanks to all those other podcasts for trying and failing to uh, approach us you know remember to uh, subscribe on iTunes and uh, YouTube tune in next week for another episode of TLDR episode 11 it will be next week and uh, thanks a lot for listening everybody it's uh...